Welcome to Late Night Chat with JT and Nico, episode 183. I gotta ask you. If every time Snap Boogie would grab the money and run away, why'd you even let him in the game? What? Miss Snap Boogie always stole the money. Why'd you let him play? Got. It's America, man. everybody <laughs> Nico, Nico, Nico. welcome back I mean, welcome here yeah and if you haven't <laughs> realized already this is one of our pre-records guys where we're actually going to be talking about not only to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the wire because that happened this year and i think that's uh it's been on a lot of people's minds a lot of people that are fans of this show back in the day and they've also been doing a podcast, I think, in part with HBO, with a lot of the creators and stuff like that, talking about the creation of this show because it spawned a lot of uh, fans and uh, success for a lot of the people involved with the show. But um, JT, this was his summer scheduled show that we're, you know, we're all batting around ideas this summer of what to do for our pre-records. I threw this idea out to JT for his episode. Let's watch something maybe that, you know, because JT's a guy that watches. You know, everything and anything under the sun, it seems like, in terms of, like, popular television shows. But, yeah, he's never seen this show. So I was like, Jay, why don't we watch The Wire? Maybe I can twist his arm to get him to watch this. So, and listen, you know, a little peek behind the curtain, guys. We're not even going to lie here with for you. This is getting recorded the week it comes out. So, like, this is... This is pr fairly new by the time you're actually going to see this because, you know, even though we're giving everybody grief about pumping out their episodes here, you know, Jay was uh, taking a little bit of break this summer as well. And uh, and Fuck it actually eight. took him a little while to get around to actually watching this show, <laughs> which we'll get into here in a moment. Oh. But, uh, but yeah, this was this was a struggle for Jay at first. I know this was a slow it was a slow start to, for you to get into this one right jay i know i know you've, was, been bitching, you've been bitching about it on the other shows just even this past week uh, on late night chat about how you've been trying to watch other things that you have planned but yet you've, you've been occupied watching this one. Oh, dude you don't even you don't even know man i i was gonna kill you i don't know why i had agreed to it if when they first you know it was the longest start to a fucking tv series and, I, and i'll give you that i mean there's there's long starts to TV series that I watch and TV shows that I watch. But you know what? That I think it's usually just in the first episode. This one took a whole fucking season just about to catch, to get me, you know, kind of intrigued. Yeah, no, I hear you. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, uh, dude, I <laughs> going back to 90s slang, like from high school, dude, it it it, it really, really throws. Threw you for your loop? Yeah. <laughs> JT froze up a little there, but he'll be back with us in a second here. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I get it. I, you know, I uh, I figured that's why I get your initial thoughts about the show out out uh, ahead of this conversation here that we're about to have, guys. And we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be breaking this down by episode by episode throughout season one. Kind of talk about. I can't even remember. I mean, I had to focus one. on that. There you go. You back you with go. us? Yeah. yeah. I don't know what. I, oh, I didn't turn the internet off on my phone. That was the problem. Oh, no worries. But go ahead. What were you saying? Uh, I was saying, yeah, this was just to 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 pay attention to what they were. Yeah, to pay attention to what they were saying, and to understand, like, just to you know, I had to really focus on it because it's been a while since I've heard anybody 
kind of talk like that. You know what I mean? Even in, uh, it, you know, even even the way the cops talk and stuff, just the just that sure. that sort of you know, uh, street talk, street talk that you get used to. You know what I mean? Sure. You're used to when you're a teenager, and then you kind of mature and get older and grow out of it. And that's that's what throws me for a loop, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's been yeah, that long. I mean, I mean, admittedly, even for me, like you can tell that you can see the show's age when you watch this. And you can tell that it was like more of a low budget HBO show, I feel like at first. And you can tell that it's and, and I do agree with you, it was a bit of a slow start. But once it kind of once you I don't think it was low budget. I don't think from by far do I think it was I low would, budget. I mean, this is back though, like in age. Well, this is 2002. I think it took a I lot mean, more money. This is probably after just after Oz and Soprano success and stuff like that. But in HBO apparently, even back then, supposedly was like I don't want to call them cheap because they obviously do great television. HBO has done some of my favorite shows ever. Just for recently, that matter. There, but, but, I think, but I, I wouldn't say it's low budget, but I think it is. It is. Uh, I don't. Uh, you know. I. I. I don't think it's like what you see today. Let's say in terms of like the television shows that they put out. In terms of I. I. I a lot of this. It looked like even the way it was shot and stuff like that. Like it. It. You know what I mean? Like it. it it's it. It. I. I don't want to say like it's. Here's the thing though. There's so many shows. That this show I think paved the way for honestly, oh, even in the 2000s, in terms of drama, in terms of even crime shows, in terms of cop procedural type shit. Obviously, cop procedural type stuff was already happening in the 90s prior to this and the 80s, whatever. You know what I mean? But like yeah. in this kind of tone, like I think though, like I think this was definitely this is a game changer. This show, honestly, like and I was late to this show. I think I only watched it when season three or four was out. And then I had to go back. And then by the time season five came out on TV, I was caught up in watching that as it came out. And this is a show that struggled, even with its viewership, despite it having its audience back then, too, right? Like, this is a show that I think became more popular as time went on. And that's why they're, they're like, that's why, you know, they're talking about it now 20 years in the future. And I haven't been listening to the podcast, guys. So if I'm wrong by any of this information, if you've checked that stuff out, I'm sure it's great. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of just wanted to go in this with my, our thoughts and experience, or at least my experience from watching the show and Jay's new experience watching the show. So we're kind of, you know what I mean? We're just coming from it from that perspective. This isn't kind of stuff that we've researched. But at the same time, like, I know that I've heard by the season, the fifth season, short, it's only 10 episodes, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And it was struggling. Like, it basically got canceled. Like, this is a show that ended up actually getting canceled, bro, like, at the end of the in, in the season five. And they were struggling. Like, but we've seen that happen. Like, we've seen them rush endings for more recent shows, too, because of troubles behind the scenes, scenes, even with the Game of Thrones show. Like, look how popular that show was. And same thing, that last season, they, they only put out a certain amount of episodes, and then they had to end it. Like, it's just like, you know what I mean? Things happen, right? So I think this is a show that, despite its popularity – it always was having some troubles like behind the scenes. And I'm sure if you listen to that podcast, you get like a better perspective on that. And from the you know horse's mouth, like I'm sure the creators on that podcast and stuff like that. Uh, uh, what's his name? David, si is David Simon, I think is his name. Um, I'm not sure about who, is, who does the podcast for this. No, but I'm talking about the creator of, uh, of the wire. He's uh, yeah. David Simon. And he's done a lot of great shows since then too, as well, David Simon, but yeah. yeah. Um, yeah so so yeah listen this is a this is a big deal so anyways though this is late night chat episode 183 guys so i do want to mention if you are watching this ep uh, episode this is going to be a conversation on the wire for a pre-record if you're interested to hear this we're going to be doing like a episode by episode breakdown and uh but next week if this is something you're not interested in or you're just coming through because you want to hear the, the promos um basically next week episode 184 late night chat it's the long weekend of september uh, we are going to be going back to our regular scheduled programming of uh, of live weekly shows with all of the co-hosts and JT. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, so look forward to that. I'm first no off. more time off. off. Yeah, no more time off. The summer's over, guys. So back That's to business. It. So that for that first long weekend, it's me and Jay. And um, we're and then, you know, same thing. After that, it'll be <clears> back <throat> into a rotation of me, Rob, Lewis, Leslie, and Julie. And you can always uh, catch us. Uh, you know, weekly, uh, you know, for the for the time being again until like, you know, up, we say otherwise, but 
you know, the summer schedule thing went in. It was interesting. I think some good episodes came out of it. Some interesting stuff that we normally wouldn't talk about on late night chat. It gave some opportunity to the host to kind of get to, to do shows with each other. So I, I think it was it was a fun thing, honestly. It, it's, um, you know, you might see it by next summer again, too, because it's it was uh, I, fi- I found it. To be successful. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, for it, us to have some time, right? Exactly. And if they weren't your cup of tea, they're always there in the library, guys. Or if you didn't have the time to watch it live, because I know a lot of people, a lot of guys, you know, we were all busy during the summer as well as were we. So, and, uh, you know, it get, kind of gave us a chance to kind of recalibrate so we don't get burnt out as well. Right. And we can, we can come back and keep putting out this week of content for you guys. Right. So, uh, we got a uh, thing too this weekend, uh, coming up Friday, if I'm not mistaken. It's a uh, killer content I got with Leslie too. So, so by the time you guys well, watch this, one will be show, just aired, it'll yeah. Be, yeah, it'll be the episode just before this in the playlist, guys. Or as always, go to the Killer Content playlist; it'll be there. Yeah, um, yeah make sure to watch those weekly, uh, sorry, monthly shows as well. And uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Like I've been talking to Jay behind the scenes. Like even though this is a special case of us talking about the Wire season one, me and Jay might put out sporad, you know, not nothing on like a like a regular basis in terms of like this is a monthly show, this is a weekly show. But you know we might we might uh, watch some other television and talk about it in this fashion. We'll see. I mean, there's yeah, a few other make shows. Make you watch would, some shit. Oh, there's a few other shows I would love to get you to watch too. I would as well, honestly. Other than this one, I mean, we could always like what, Game of Thrones. Not, you know, that's one of them. But I mean, there's a few others, man. There's a few yeah. others. There's a few others too, like popular yeah. television shows. I don't think you've actually seen, right? And I would love to get you to watch, right? So. Um, you know, well, we always try to steer each other in the right way, so right. I, I was kind of getting kind of frustrated about this one at first. You know, I was like, which, which way did Nico steer me with this one? Sure, well, but I'm down there, I'm down to trying out different different series and stuff like that. You want yeah. me to watch, or, you know? or or like you know, or we can always continue this summer down the road, too. I'm fine with that. I actually kind of do want to watch season two after finishing this season, uh, to be honest <laughs> with you, but you don't have to jump right into it. I know you got other things to catch up on, but like I said, oh, guys, the summer's dying out. Then. There's nothing. Let us know. Hit us up in the comments, guys, or let us know if you'd like that idea, if you'd like to see me and Jay on a semi-regular basis, maybe with other people. Do <laughs> doing a break, a deep dive conversation on TV series and stuff like that. Like kind of like the way that we do the movies, but maybe a little different, you know what I mean? Like something like that, but, uh, but like a semi-regular TV show type uh, show, because uh. I think it's the only way you're going to get here to, Jay talk about TV, whether he's, uh, unless, you know, he's giving you his updates on the late night chat shows, uh, weekly. Right. So I, I would love to, for JT to do his own TV show show, but, uh, you know, maybe one day. <laughs> it's, it's just weird talking. I'm, 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 I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to talk to myself. Right. That's all right. So, Get it out so. there the right way. This is but, a way uh, we can we can converse and say it about some TV, and I can revisit <laughs> some old uh, some old stuff and you use some new stuff at the same time. You know what I mean? So it, it'd be good. It's so. funny because uh, uh, last week's episode, if you guys have tuned into that one with Rob, uh, he had mentioned that he had just watched the Goonies for the first time. So that at after fifty years, he's at fifty, and he just watched the Goonies for the first time. So. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It was just something yeah. that blew my mind. You know, like this is this is a TV show. This is a little different. But when you, when you, and it's a, like a cult classic like that, and you don't watch right. something like that, that's kind of crazy. Well, that's that's kind of the approach I took with this show, with, though, with you as well. Though this is a well-known show. This is a well. This is a beloved show as well. There's a lot of people. There are fans of this show, whether you knew that or not. There, this mm-hmm. what this is a big show, man. And and mean, you know. Not only for like the hip hop cult uh, community and stuff like that. I mean, obviously, you know, um, drug community. Yeah, no, <laughs> but but the show goes places. Like it's, um, you know, throughout its five seasons, um, it 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 takes on like different. Uh, each season's kind of unique in the sense that um, they, they 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 show you different perspectives and things that were going on in the in this in the city at that time. As the seasons go on, they delve deep into politics. Uh, the newspaper, how the news pe- uh, people work in this city, the education system. Like, there's a lot of shit that they actually go well, into. Is it all stemming from this show, this uh, this season, though? 
basically. It spirals out, honestly, because I would say the first three seasons is one show, and then the fourth and fifth season is like another part, honestly. And then the second season, the first time I watched it back in the day when I was younger because I was down with all the gangster shit that was going on in the first season, I thought it was a huge departure. And at the time, I actually thought it was the weakest season. Now, Since then, I've rewatched it, and I was like, this is actually one of the better seasons. It's actually a great season, the second season, but it's just – it was such a departure from the first season of the show. It feels like a whole different show. We'll get into uh, it but by the okay. by the time you get to the last episode of the season, guys. Everybody, uh, let, you know, if you already know or not, uh, and spoilers ahead. Okay, this might get you interested in watching it, but we're gonna basically talk about everything. Sorry, uh, <laughs> but so you know, uh, if, maybe this will inspire you guys to watch the show um, if you haven't before, but. Everybody kind of gets reassigned at the end of this sh- season. Like all the cops get reassigned to different places, right? Like so, so the, re- the as I told you, Jay, the second season takes uh, place on the ports. That's where McNulty gets sent because remember his yeah, that, like, yeah. where's the place you don't want to get sent? Because he kind of fucked around way too many times. He kind of <laughs> right by the end of this season, they're like, oh yeah, we're gonna. He's like, you're a good cop. I'm gonna take care of you. Where do you not want to go? And he's like, he's like, he's got that shit eating grin on his face. Um, but yeah, no, he he sends him to the ports, and then at, when he is at the ports, he stumbles upon this whole other fucking thing that basically. But he looks like he wanted to be at the ports, bro. He looks he like kinda, that's where he wanted. To. He, he said he did it on done. purpose. He was yeah. kind of done with what was going. Yeah, that's what I mean. You got to see. You gotta, you, know, you gotta watch this the show. But yeah, it's. It's interesting the direction it takes, but it's like a huge departure. And then basically what ends up happening is like throughout that season, you see like the, um, the downfall of the projects. This is when they destroy the projects, like the pit, like the, all the buildings, they demolish them. Yeah. Like and I know they, they were talking about the, 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 the buildings and stuff. Like yes. That. They, 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 they were getting, yeah, yeah, exactly. So that develops and everybody gets reassigned and that task force basically has to disband. And there's people in jail and there's people that are doing different assignments uh, that were cops now. One of them's a city police. One of them's a, d- a detective again on the homicide squad, right? So, like, there's 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 a whole seat change in the second season. Like, everything that they spent the time to build up in this first season kind of changes in the second season. And then by the third season, it kind of comes back to the gangster shit again. And, and now it's kind of focusing on different people. So you got to kind of watch it. I don't want to spoil anything for anybody out there because we're only talking about the first season here today. And this is Jay's first time watching it. But it's really interesting, honestly. So, like, it's, it's, it's worth pursuing. Like, and I will admit... <laughs> as jay said here it is a bit of a slow burn if i didn't know it was coming honestly i might have felt the same way watching this for the first time they really took their time in establishing these these characters and building up the plot that really paid off i think at the end of the season but you had to wait till those last two three episodes right jay i mean literally yeah yeah that's Mm. but then like it's everything that they've connected up to this point kind of comes together beautifully like it's really well done but they really dragged their feet Right. Like I mean, they, in the middle of the season, the middle of the season gave you a little bit of a spike, right? And then it made you right. think, you know, okay, well, where this thing, I could see it going somewhere, but where, right? And then as I'm watching it, you know, it kind of slowed down again on me. And then after near the last three, the last three episodes, like I said, it picked right up, and I was, like, I was kind of thinking, fuck, if it wasn't four in the morning last night, I probably would have put on season two, the start of it at least. But right, I didn't want to confuse you know- myself with this one. Sure. You know what though? Like it's it's it says a lot that they actually took the time though to do that. You know what I mean? Like it, it really you know, most people would be afraid like to get canceled and you know what I mean? Like and, and like I said, this show did struggle in that sense at times of its uh of it of it being on TV. But I think it says a lot that the writers really cared to build this story up throughout the first season give you like because this could have you know what i mean for all they knew this could have been it after that first season and really that could you could just have walked away after this season and not watched anything but there's so many things left unsaid characters and different you know what i mean going to different places and like you know what i mean like so it it's it's it would have left a lot of questions but i think i think as a as a season like all together i think it was it was pretty good honestly but by the end of it it was a slow burn for sure. I mean, I could see why they, why they, you know, had a difficult start. Now, I mean, in the, just in the time frame that this came out, I thought this was earlier, but in the time frame now that I look at the year, um, two thousand two, yeah, yeah, the time there was a lot of good shows. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, one hour, you know, uh, 
drama. What do they call it? Dr- sitcom drama thrillers, yeah. whatever you want to call it at that time, right? Well, this and is even as it was going gotta, up against big guys like fucking even the Sopranos was still on at that yes. time. That was in the height, the height of its fucking. This is HBO when it was it became a bit huge, right? Mm-hmm. During this period of time, and and you gotta look too. This was from two thousand and two to two thousand and eight, and they only did five seasons, Jay. Like that, that, that. I was wondering was, why. Okay. What's that? I was wondering why, because I noticed that now there's only five seasons, right? You had to take time in between the seasons. I, I'm telling you, whether it was it was funding for the show or just wasn't getting the audience, that it's it took yeah. a while. That, that last season took a while for it to come out, and it was it was kind of rut. Like, arguably, I think most people now that were fans of this television show, and I could probably say the same thing, say the last season's the worst season, actually. It's e- it's either going to be come down to the last season or the first season, depending how you felt about the show. Because like for you, by the time you get to the last season, if you're invested enough and you like the characters, there's a lot of big shit that does happen in the fifth season. But it's one of those seasons that it was only ten episodes. You could tell they were trying to wrap yeah. things up. You know what I mean? Like there was there was a lot like they were trying to get through at the, to wrap up this show right to its conclusion. So I yeah. think so I think like. For me, I, I would have to again rewatch it. It might be the weakest season the last season, sadly, but and I think like the third season is probably the best season, um, honestly. But like, you know, I, I've liked every season. It's just funny how times change because like when I first saw the second season, I was like, Man, that season's so shit. And then like when I realized what they were trying to do, mm-hmm. um, I was like, Okay, it's actually not that bad. It's just at the time it was such a different show. I felt like, what the fuck is all this? Why does it matter? And then and it's like it's 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 but that's what's great about it in two seasons they tried to do two different kind of stories and that take place in the same city with the same characters and show you how it's all connected they really went for the long game well, in terms of storytelling here man it's pretty I f- crazy i feel like they kind of had to do that because i i almost feel like the fir- this first season here um i feel like they almost ended it like they didn't know if they were going to get a second season right and all that right? may have been the case that may have been the case. That may have I mean, been a lot the case, of shows right? back then had that, you know, I mean, we still do. We still get that where we get yeah, those sure. single season shows and we don't know if they're coming out with at least the first three. Like, you know, not everybody gets signed to three to three seasons right away off the bat. Right. Mm-hmm. Unless you're a decent, you know, unless you got a decent, uh, you know, background in, 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 in that type of show that you're putting out. Right. Um, yeah, you're you're gonna get more than one season, but usually nowadays it's like one season, right? You get that, you test mm-hmm. it out, and if it's any good, then they throw it away. If not, right? Well, that's the th- well, that's the thing. I think I think that being said, like if we were to come back and talk about this again, I actually might take the time to check out some of this podcast or learn a little bit of more about the production behind the scenes about this show because I am interested and I know that they're talking about it a lot with it being the twentieth anniversary um so yeah that's it i do i you know i'm sure i would find it interesting in that sense right so i think um you know if you guys know if there's anybody that knows that kind of stuff there anybody who wants to bust out some stats or facts for us in the comments hit us up and let us know because i know this isn't a this isn't a live episode this one but yeah with, let's get into it though let's start talking about the actual episodes do a breakdown of it i just wanted to kind of get your our general genuine feelings out of the way here because i i didn't want to shy away from the fact that jay didn't really love the experience going into this uh you know as he's mentioned and uh and uh i you know i enjoyed rewatching. Well, i had a hard time yeah bro. i enjoyed rewatching it but um you know i i knew i i was a fan of it already right so i'm, I'm glad at least it ended well for you Oh. Yeah, it was worth the, the 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 it was worth the thirteen episodes to be honest. With you. <laughs> it took a little bit of time, but yeah, I got right. through it, and it, and I guess that it, it it got better as it you know it took a while. It was just a real slow burn for me. Sure, right. So I mean, TV shows are hard that way, with especially with me. I mean, it takes a while before I start to watch them, but I don't know. Maybe it wasn't corny enough. I guess sometimes I don't know. I I don't know what mood I'm in now for television shows. Right, right. In that sense. Lately, I've been in the mood for like corny, fucking quirky, or whatever stupid television shows. So I think this is why, you know, I had to sit there and focus, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, at the end of the day, you know, to sit down and watch 13 episodes of something that is just starting off as like this was at the time, mm-hmm. and then have such a slow burn like that in the beginning, you know, getting to know each character. It took me forever just to fucking realize who's who. And who yeah, stands in what position and who stands in what 
So yeah, no, this should be interesting. I'm interested to hear what he has to say about that. It was it was interesting revisiting this. I do hope that we continue the conversation in some capacity, like whether it's by doing the show or just rewatching it and talking about it outside of this. But I I, I think we could do something with this where we uh, we talk about some full seasons of shows on a semi regular basis. Uh, you know, I don't want to have to rush and be responsible for watching you know, 13 hours of, uh, of TV a month or something like that for a TV show. Um, but if it was something like a show about, you know, uh, us watching TV, essentially just like the movie one, but, um, but yeah, so I, I think if we put it out here and there and we're able to do it at our own pace, that might be something that we're interested in. So, but yeah, the, uh, this was a good rewatch. I did like it. I did, uh, there was some stuff that I forgot about it. There was a lot of big scenes that I obviously I remembered going into it. Um, I've only rewatched this show, I think, twice, twice, maybe three times. Maybe I don't think so, though. I, I think uh, like I or like at least sitting down and watching the whole thing. Um, and like there's shows like Sopranos, I feel like I've seen like six times now, several times. Right. Especially even in more recent years. So this was cool for me because I actually haven't revisited this, this uh, show in probably over 10 years. Um, so, I mean, probably not too long after it ended was probably the last time that I've seen this. So it, it was, it was even for me, it was, uh, it was an interesting rewatch. And there's a lot of big actors in this too. I mean, Idris Elba being one of the biggest ones in this, and he's not even that that is that huge of a presence in this season. Like he is one of the main characters, I guess, in the sense, uh, but in that sense, but uh, he doesn't have a lot to do, I would say, in this season. Um, obviously, the peak of that being season three for him. I think he got a lot of screen time in season three, and uh, you know, even in terms of the smaller stuff when they focus on his. Uh, on like the gangster type shit happening in season two. He's certainly a big part of that, but there's just not enough of it. I would say to consider like him still having a lot of screen time in the second season. And then at least from what I remember, and then season three, he's such a big character in that as Stringer Bell. Um, yeah. So it's really, really cool. Uh, but yeah, great cast here. Dominic West is uh, Jimmy McNulty, Lance Reddick. There's Okay. Hopefully. Yeah. So no, I was just I was just saying, you know, uh, about um, I was just talking about the fact that the last time I probably even rewatched this show, I just realized was probably not too long after it ended because I think I watched it with Christine. She seen it with me the first time, which would have been over ten years ago when we watched it. And if it's a twenty year anniversary, that means I probably watched it about a couple of years after the actual series ended with her. So this was a kind of a this was a big deal for me too. Like like some shows, like I said, like The Sopranos and things like that, I've seen like several times. I feel like now, and uh, even in recent years, this I haven't seen in like ten years, so at least. So it's been it's it's been an interesting rewatch even for me because. I probably watched it one full time after the show was done. And that was with Christine, which would have been over like 10 years ago. Now. So yeah, it's, it's really interesting in that, in that sense, even for me to rewatch this one. So, so yeah, so here we go. So, uh, season one, the first, uh, episode is called the target. And, uh, basically the intro song that we did there is not only <laughs> the intro, but it's actually the first I guess big quote from the opening sequence of seeing McNulty on the corner, just sitting on the corner with, uh, a, like I guess another drug dealer who's kind of watching the cops clean up the homicide of his, of this, some guy called Snot Boogie who got killed, uh, because he stole money from the dice game, I guess in in the hood there, and uh, he asks him basically why they always allow him because they're aware of the fact that this guy always does some dumb shit like that and tries to steal money from the dice game. And he's like, How, why would you guys keep letting him play then? Because, and the guy's sitting there like, man, they didn't have to kill him over this shit. Like everyone knows who that, why that guy, that, that guy's like that or whatever. And he's kind of like giving them the pass almost. Right. He's sure. like, could have just fucked them up. They didn't have to shoot his ass. Right. And McNulty's like, uh, you know, he's like, why? Like, why would you keep letting him play? Cause, because it's America, man. He's like, you gotta let him play. Right. And so that, that, 
And I think like right from the get go, once you get to know J- uh, Jimmy McNulty, it, it kind of defines, I think, his character, even that scene in the sense that like he actually does try to kick it with them, get an understanding of these guys. Like, you know what I mean? Like he kind of. Well, younger kids, you know what I mean? Getting at yeah. that to know that, like getting to be, you know, as a cop, you, you do kind of want to hopefully if you're a good cop, you like want to, you want to teach, you want to teach these guys a little bit, you know, it's not just about going in there and fucking breaking down the door and, you know, arresting the people. Homicide detective, you know what I mean? Like he only cares about the murders. Like there's a lot of shit that he allows to slide in this season. <laughs> and, and he's, he's a little, you know, fast and loose with the rules as well as a cop himself. Right. In terms of mm. like manipulating the system. Right. Manipulating. Um, yeah. 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 Um, and, and, and by the way, throughout this whole conversation here today, there's lots of things that I don't want to fucking tip you off to. So it's hard for me to knowing what's going to happen to a lot of these characters to talk about this shit, but I'll continue on. Um, you know, I'll be fine in that sense, but it's, interesting. <laughs> it's interesting to see these characters arc, honestly, quite honestly, seeing from one season to, you know, a few seasons later in this show, it's, there's a lot of crazy shit that happens. So um but yeah so that's kind of the opening scene there uh right and uh after that and then you kind of add whatever you want here jay i'm just gonna go through some shit that happens in each episode right and well i got two intents like the first like i told you the first one or two episodes kind of lost me i I figured you know okay we're, we're taking a stroll through memory lane let me let me focus and get my my 90s nostalgia back in, in into play yeah and the problem was at that age, I think in the early '90s when this took place, I was doing that whole fucking uh, '90s nostalgia thing. So I wasn't really, except for school, I wasn't really into that sort of into that life, into the lifestyle, here. like into that sort of hanging out and doing that kind of stuff. So I, getting in, getting to understand what's going on and who's who and who's the player in the game. And trying to figure out this kind of stuff was interesting. Yep. I'm, I I think the first episode I was more trying to get to understand who's taking orders from who. Yeah, right? You're trying to figure not out not that. from not from the picture in the background there, but from the actual cops, right? Because they I think that's yeah. how it kind of starts off a little bit. You start seeing who's they're forming the task force and they're, uh, yep. you know, it's still kind of like it is today. I mean, these guys a low budget task force all the time. They put a bunch of clowns together, and, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if I didn't mention it already, yeah, this basically focuses for this show on the Baltimore drug scene, I think, in the early 90s. I think David Simon, who's the creator of this show, I believe was working, if I'm not mistaken, I had heard, it, 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 uh, I think, for the paper. Like, he was working in Baltimore, I think, at this time. I think this is based on maybe not his experiences, uh, but he was things he was either reporting on. Or um, because I think he was a newsman or he he was a writer or something. And and I think he was in Baltimore at the time. And that's why David Simon, the the creator, I think, uh, I think I've heard that about him. So I don't want, I hope I'm not speaking out of school, but I believe that's what kind of inspired that he was in that yeah. era. Yeah, and then about the shit that was going on in the city, because Baltimore at this time was a really bad like area at this time, right? And the drug trade and everything else was going on, as you can see. There's similar shit going on in Baltimore that's in, you can compare to what you would think of grimy New York times in like the 80s and stuff like that, right? Because there's there's projects here in this in this season. There's there's drug shit going on. There's a lot of low income type stuff going on. There, you know what I mean? There's 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 drug addicts kind of roaming the streets. There's a lot of shit going on in this. There's crime. There's homicides. Um, so yeah, so that's it's this is obviously a dangerous place to uh, to live in and. Um, and yeah, and they, like Jay said, they basically are putting a task force together in this season, and you see like it grow and get put together throughout the season, and they start building a case that leads to all kinds of things, like dirty politics and money laundering, and like, uh, and uh, and and they say that a lot. Like when you start following the money, all these fucking other avenues open up because they started off on on uh, the homicides or at least some of their interests were in the homicides, but then they got connected to the drug shit, which got connected to where the money's coming from or where it's going or what it's being spent on. And it kind of spirals out from there. And by the end of it, all the cops in the last couple of episodes are like, man, what a case. Like everyone loves this case. This is like a fantastic case that turned into something completely different than what they expected when they first went into it. Like at first it seemed like this was like a nothing case. And it turned into like this, this, this 
thing with so many key players in it. Like it's some crazy things going on, right? Like it's it's pretty interesting. Well, I mean, you get you get introduced to everybody from uh, from uh, uh, Stinger to to for, to the lieutenants. You know what I mean? Like so, you're getting introduced to the big players right away off the bat, right? Which kind of like for me, uh, I don't want to I don't want to say too much, but for me, you know, I was just getting used to the the um the characters you know like and and where everything was going and it kind of you know i didn't realize it but but and i'll have to tell you this now because i'll probably forget but how about halfway through it reminded me of a show that i have been watching and i'm pretty sure you can guess what i'm gonna say because there's actually somebody in this one that's the mother and the other one that i watch so yeah yeah i didn't realize she's great okay she shows up only in the last she, couple episodes. Yeah. But she's a big character, I think, in the next season too, if I'm not mistaken. It's two well, or three. Yeah, she's she's, she's playing the, the same sort of character. Mother. Too, she's as playing well. the drug dealer's mother. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's 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 a, it, it threw me. It I'm threw glad me you for caught a fucking that. Loop. I'm glad you caught that. Yeah, I knew it was her. I I knew it. she doesn't change much. Like her, nope. out of all these characters, I think she's probably aged the best. To be honest with you. Yeah. Well, yeah. no, Idris Elba still looks great too. The guy who plays Stringer Bell, like he's a. Big well, I don't guy. check him out on a regular basis, but I mean, I, I see mean, her and for her age. I've seen yeah. him. He's ripped. He was in. <laughs> I've seen him. He's ripped. <laughs> I love you, bro. You're the best. <laughs> I seen him. He's ripped. He's ripped. Okay. Yeah, no, no, I, she's great though. She's great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it, just to, just okay. Starting off, I mean, we don't hear. Actually, we don't honestly. We don't hear from her until later on, and that's what threw me for a loop because I didn't know about her until later on, until the season kicked right. into gear. Right. That's what it seemed like when it, when it started to get more into politics and money. It's when they, she starts showing up. Right. And now, well, it's when D'Angelo getting introduced. D'Angelo, just before he gets arrested. Arrested. Yeah. No, I know. I know how that we'll, we'll, we'll get into how that, how that plays out. But yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to start from the, I, I know I went from the beginning, from the end there, but it just, I wanted to remember that because I wrote it down. It's all, guys, I have about 13 pages of notes because they're <laughs> each episode here. So and the only problem is I don't have the first, you know, four. So yeah. you're so going to have to wing that one. But yeah, jump in. I'm gonna. I'll just go through the uh, the. But I mean, uh, also thing. with the with the uh, with what they're showing is how they how they put this task force together and they throw them in a little bit of a. And I can't remember who it was. If it was the if it was the major or if it was the the commissioner, uh, not the commissioner, lieutenant, but, uh, the lieutenant, lieutenant yeah. Daniels. Yeah, they're okay. they're, they're, they're superior. Yeah, they're superiors, right? Yeah. So their their superiors would be like. Uh, would have been what's his name here well he the lieutenant Rawls. reports to the commissioner raw yeah like he he he, he reports to uh to so rawls i don't think is the actual commissioner but the deputy got the judge he, he report he reports to uh uh the deputy commit uh and then he reports to the other guy too um who his superior is um the other black guy who's part of the cops um the, the main guy his boss essentially yeah no i know what you're saying but um hey. Yeah, no, go on. I don't know why it's doing this today. Sorry, bro. It, it was fine yesterday. I don't know if it's because I got this other screen on. Yeah, so getting them to figure out where they're going and what... Uh, yeah. Yeah, getting yeah. them to to figure out where... They, I'm not even going to use that right now. It seems like when I open another page, it wants to slow down on me, guys. I apologize. Um, yeah, so getting to know all that making them put them into the room getting them all situated into that basement trying to figure them all out you know it, it seems like everybody's got a problem with everybody at first you know right they don't want to be there with each other they don't want to be doing this they don't, they don't all want to work with the knock mcnulty mcnulty well mcnulty essentially ends up there because he's being punished he gets booted out of the main homicide offices essentially like and he's working with this other team and they put them Basically in the basement the of some old fucking building and they and they uh you know and lieutenant um daniels who's their superior in the case 
who's running this operative basically you find out like through through the episodes you find out that mcnulty's got reach like he's got like the the main uh the judge of uh of of the baltimore at this time he has connections with him mm-hmm. he gets to pull strings with him he knows a guy in the, in the fbi or CIA, I think it's the FBI. I think is the CIA or FBI. I think it's the FBI. That guy who's his buddy, right? I think. Um, yeah, FBI. Do to sometimes uh, you know stir it up or kind of get involved or give him intel. Um, so he's got connections throughout the city. Like he's fucking that lawyer chick who's like uh, she reports to like the main. Uh, you know what I mean? Like the the uh, to the judge essentially. Like she's a big deal lawyer. Uh, for the the city, judge is right? the best. And uh, yeah, the judge is cool. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, so like, so there's, but then what you end up finding out is, uh, again, we're jumping around, but we'll get all this stuff out of the way and <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. Let's go on. Yeah. We can, it'll be easier to talk about some of these things. Lieutenant Daniels, you find out that McNulty superior Lieutenant Daniels in this case, he's, uh, possibly dirty from back in the day. So like you start finding out, like everybody's got some relationship with each other throughout, throughout the, 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 the task force. Oh, yeah. yeah. That are kind of getting thrown into this situation. Right. And then you got the rookie cops, Herc and, um, the other guy, um, I forgot his name right now, but her. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's his name? Well, there's a lot of black guys. So it's even hard to <laughs> <laughs> I just I felt like saying that like that yeah, too. Yeah, thanks. Like, oh, right. yeah, that guy. <laughs> that guy. Hey, remember him? Yeah, you no. can't you can't do that with this show. <laughs> no, I'll tell you, I'll tell you right now. It's uh I, I Carver just out of here, Harvard. There Carver, you go. Carver, Herc and Carver, they're the, like the rookies. Carver's, you know, he wants to get on the ta- like he basically becomes a city cop by the end of this, and Herc just got his detective um his stripes or whatever, right? So like yeah. or uh sergeant or whatever. So so yeah, so there's you know, there's a lot of different facets, and then you got somebody like, um, like what the hell's his name? I forgot his name now. Um, the best Don't guy. Me, I'll tell you how. I'll tell you which guy. He's fantastic. The guy who was who was um, Lester Freeman. That guy yeah. is is one of my favorite characters because Lester's one of these cops that used to be a great homicide detective, but then he left because of all the bullshit politics and stuff that was going on. It seemed like at the time, and he wasn't getting his like he, like to his satisfaction, like the cases in terms of like his work and stuff like that wasn't going well. So he ended up getting sent to the pawn shop unit, which is in the fucking this old ass basement, which they're operating this uh this operative out of there, right at that at this like task force that they put together, right, and it's just funny because at first you're like who he, like when they first come in there they all think he's like a hump right they're like look at this fucking guy like you know what i mean like yeah. where do you come from but he's a genius like this guy's like one of the best they always say about everybody oh these good police like you know what i mean like everybody's like uh like they could tell like they're they have respect for like the good cops you know what i mean that do their job well like like in any profession in that sense but like it, with with them it's just like there's a lot of scumbags obviously that are on these uh, and you know they are cops and as you can see, even to, to like recent shit that happens right now with the police brutality, right? So it's like it's you know you see a lot of it, and but you see some of that in this too, right? Yeah. You see some of that in this <clears throat> too. So it's like you know it's always existed. I just think there's people that um, respect that badge and kind of take it seriously, and then there's other idiots, right? Like you had those two useless guys that the one asshole that was trying to injure himself that was part of the task force trying to get time off work. Remember that guy? Like the, the, the fucking older guys that were just like listen. Well, yeah, like you know, if you take a fall down the stairs here, it's only a couple. Fun. Nobody's there. There's no camera. Yeah. And then I come, I'll break some ribs. And but you know, yeah, they were smart. They you know they wanted to fucking retire early. So so the uh, from there in the first episode, they start introducing you to the players, the guys of the drug dealers. Uh, the main guys in the season, I would say, are D'Angelo Barksdale, who's uh, the um, a nephew of. Um, uh, he's of Avon Barksdale. Avon Barksdale is the top dog. Like Avon Barksdale is the guy is like um, the main dude that's running this whole drug operation in Baltimore city and uh, throughout the projects to the street corners and everything else. So he, he's the main dude. Stringer bell is his right hand man. Now D'Angelo works for him, but then he's also got we who's like his shooter. Like the guy who kind of takes care of everything in terms of like, you got to go kill somebody or you got to take care of some business. Uh, we is basically the shooter care, like the guy that takes care of that sh- type of shit. Uh, and then you got like a bunch of characters that are in the pits of the projects, which D'Angelo gets basically like demoted and sent down there to kind of take care of business and get that in order. 
um, because one of the other guys got taken out or went to jail or something like that. So, so he fucked up and they were like, D'Angelo was working like in the buildings. Like yeah, he actually had like a station in the pro like, yeah, the buildings. And they said, no, you got to go to the pit. So he's got to go out of the low rises, you know, which is like, you know, you see some of that even in Toronto, like the low income housing kind of areas, instead of like a big fucking build project building though, he's actually like in the pit, like in the middle of like a, the, the, the low rise type, uh, you know, like places, half of the places are abandoned and the rest of it's like all drug addicts, like literally in the pit. So it's like a shitty spot to be. And to well, they got a coach in the middle of the fucking right, park. In the, the middle background. of the the yeah. yeah so you got Bodie and you got Wallace and I think it's like his name's like Pooh or something like that the other guy right it's like Poob or Pooh I don't know it's fucking it, something like that I think it's there's like, a bunch of them I had to write them down because there's so many different names man yeah with the young guys right like uh you know Wallace all those guys they had a, a bunch of them right all those young kids that were running around and they're doing things for them right yeah yeah, Wallace. Yeah. But those are the main ones, Bodie and Wallace and, and him, right? So like so and then and then you got introduced to like the like you know, like the drug addict uh, that we get to know and this is names Bubbles, Bubs, um, as a lot of people call him. It's fucking and, hilarious, bro. Yeah, and then and then you know uh you, what's interesting is as big as a character as we mentioned, Omar becomes in this show. He's not even in the first episode. It's worth noting, he's not even in this first episode at all. Omar, I made a note of that. Uh, they, they brace you for his appearance yeah yeah because there's not really there's a reason for him to show when he shows up uh and it's not the uh the homosexual shit jay because there I you go want to talk about that <laughs> he, he is a gay man uh which is which was weird and taboo even for this time honestly in 2002 because you're talking about one of the hardest gangsters on the show also he's a black man so that's like something that i think isn't very popularized not only in black culture but even like as a being a, like a fucking badass like drug like a killer basically right so i think yeah. that when that happened i think people even then were a little surprised by it or maybe they didn't dig that but that's kind of what made the character interesting and different you know what i mean right from the get-go in that sense like i think it's a really taboo when it comes to gangsters in general i don't think it's necessarily to do with the black guys or anything like that no, from I would, it's, I, it's italians it's everything bro I, mean, I, would, they, I would think there's certain cultures though them included where you don't really hear a lot about like this you know what i mean like the the gay like that like uh you know what i mean like gays or like things like that i i mean i don't to speak for them because i don't no, know no, like, they got old town road now so we're good from what i understand though i think especially at this time that's what i mean this is a show that was like you know like the hip-hop community really like you don't hear about gay stuff really in hip-hop really until no. very recently that's what i yeah. mean so i think it's at this time in 2002 it's it's a yeah like you hear them talking shit about him and calling him names and everything well, yeah you know what i mean in, in this season because of that right like it wasn't something that like today and this and that's is what I mean. And going back to the nineties, yeah. When AIDS, AIDS is referenced in this season. Bubbles, like there's people like that. Yeah. Like, Buddy has AIDS, like yeah. you know what I mean, like from Dirty Needles, right? So yeah. like that's something that was, that was something that was still an epidemic, like epidemic at this time, right? And as the season goes on, like there's a lot of you talk. You can about see that. where it could happen. I mean, yep. look at all the fucking needles being used. Yeah. I mean, regardless, this is just one project in all of the fucking America. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I mean, to be honest with you it was just that's maybe i think i had a hard time getting into it too in the sense that even trying to think about how school what life was and all that kind of stuff too back then it was still really you know not not spoken about i know it was there it could have it had to have been there right but it was right. never it was never spoken about right well that's what in i think sense. I, I think it's more it wasn't even probably as shocking oh well, i guess for this it was shocking in the sense of where this show takes place in the time period that it takes place maybe not in 2002 no as shocking but you're right like back I think in the they were 90s. easy to get away with it on television too in 2002 right right yeah right? as yeah, opposed so. to 90. but you know i think that he turned into for a lot of people um one of the favorite characters on this show so i think it speaks to a lot to the fact that people that may have even been maybe not comfortable with that or against mm -hmm. it or whatever else they they could they couldn't deny that they liked the character you know what i mean so i think that kind of that's a big I think that was a big deal for some people watching this show. I don't want to say if that opened up or changed. No, it. you know what? Actually, that 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 changed my perspective on it big time. Be, only because, right. you know what? He was such a cool character at the end of it all. Like that's in, how in you a get sense, there. like yeah. I mean, okay, the part when he's twirling his boyfriend's hair was the part that threw me off because the guy's got a big scar on his forehead. But notice during that, right off. 
his his other guy that's there is kind yeah, of disgusted by, by it, what's yeah. going on. He's like, I'm going to get out of here. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm going to get up out of here, guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what I mean. This is not like yeah. they weren't shying away from the fact that there's going to be people that were not down with that, like even yeah. in this environment, right? But you gotta you gotta look at it also too. You're talking about like you know. You've seen Oz, like <laughs> shit that goes on in those, like, and somebody like this, they referenced him actually in this, when they were talking to Avon about him, they said when he was up in jail, he had a whole yard of boys that he was with or whatever. And that's what I mean. So this is something obviously that happens in jail as well. And some people, maybe whether or not they were when they got there or otherwise, right. You know and I mean, but that's something that yeah. I think that a lot of these guys, maybe they are doing that in jail and then they're coming out and maybe that not so much. Right. I mean, like, or that you don't hear no, about you hide it. Yeah. You're right, going to hide it. Right, right. Right. So that's what I mean. I think it's one of those things that like, I mean, in the Sopranos, kind of like you said, in the Sopranos, they would kill you when if they found out something like that. But I well, think you have that to leave town, bro. Right, but it, we also saw in the Sopranos there was a whole arc about that whole thing where Tony, by the end of it too, was just like, he's like, "What the fuck you want?" There's guys like that in the army now. He's like, you know, yeah. he was trying to get over. Like he's like, yeah, and then know. somebody said, "Well, well I think he had kids too, and he just helped them understand a little bit better." Sopranos is a little bit different because there's the whole religious aspect of what they do yeah. and the whole family thing. Yeah, absolutely. But I think it's it examined examined it in a way where even at the end there was times in the Sopranos where he was trying to justify. Right. Almost allowing him to to you remember there was to times where he was yeah. trying to justify it and people were like back. disgusted at him. They're like, What the fuck? You can't let this guy come back in the face. You're gonna kiss this guy on two both cheeks, right? You remember that? Like that was a no, but that was a thing. So, I yeah. know, I know, I don't mean to laugh. I just I remember no, that, I know yeah. it was funny. No, but then it was played up that way. It was supposed it was played to play out to laugh, yeah. That's what he said. Like in the end, he was just like, and then even this therapist, I remember, asked him about it. Or he's like, she's like, you know, like, you know, when he goes goes to prison, he's like, that's different. <laughs> he says it that's Sopranos. He's like, there's no women in there, <laughs> right? Like, it's just like, I don't know why that's accepted. He's like, come on. He's like, he's like, listen. Of course, there's been people that were. He's like, but you don't talk about like it's just it is what it is. Like we don't. You don't expose that. You, no, you expose yeah. like that's it. Like that's what he was trying to say. He's like the, he wasn't stupid. Like he's like that, well, he couldn't be the first guy, right? Like so. I think the guy from The Sopranos wasn't as badass as Omar, anyways. No, to not at all. Not no at way. all. I mean, yeah, he was badass with his leather straps and his bicycle, right, his right, motorbike, right. But that's about it, right? Right, right. But I think, like, you know what I mean? Like, he's a great character, Omar. Honestly, so. Yeah. But yeah, so um, then you got Bunk. Bunk and McNulty. Bunk is working on the homicide still. He used to work with Bunk. They're good pals. Bunk comes around a lot during this season because he's kind of somewhat working with them because he's trying to close homicide cases that are related to the drug case that they've been putting together. And uh, and then, yeah, you got Commissioner Rawls. Uh, I think that's – no, he's a deputy. Sorry, deputy. And then you got the commissioner. Major um, Ross. Yes. Yeah. You got the commissioner uh, uh, that he reports to and in uh, a deputy there for the for the homicide. He um, he's McNulty's old boss fucking hates him with a passion. So you got him, too. Right. And uh, and uh, oh, yeah, he's like a major. That's what he is. at yeah, this Major point. Williams. Yeah. Major Ra- yes, that's what he is at this point. And uh, yeah. And basically, Ooh. basically, I he, like him, man. He's a great character. Too, he, is. As well. he is. He's a hard ass cop. And, uh, yeah, basically, um, in this episode, they're just basically setting up all the players. Like you said, Jay, they're kind of just introducing you. They kind of do a good job of almost introducing you to everybody. At least that's important right here at the start. And they, they start introducing more characters every other episode after that, like a couple or one or two. But mm-hmm. uh, but most of these people, yeah, basically you see that in this, he gets demoted, D'Angelo. He has to go to the pit. The low rises, he loses the tower. Um, you know, you get introduced to all the people we kind of just mentioned there. And uh, and basically, yeah, McNulty starts working with this task force that they put together when he goes to the basement. And and the cool thing is um, there's some big uh, actors in here. Uh, Wallace is a young Michael B. Jordan, which is which is crazy. Michael B. Jordan is very young in this in this show. Um, he's he's you know, he's always been remembered from this, uh, though, he you know, is one of his uh, roles uh, from back then. Uh, everyone kind of points to. Um, and then also, you know, um, Dominic West, uh, Jimmy McNulty, he's been on some other shows on HBO that were popular as well. 
Um, I, I've never watched them, but I've heard that he's been doing good. Like uh, Herc, Dominic, Lombardozzi, he's been in lots of stuff. He's been in lots of stuff, Herc. I mean, he was even just in the most recent um, uh, Scorsese movie, the one that was on uh, The Irishman. Oh, okay, that. yeah, I know. I've seen him other places in none of that too. But no, I, you, when you were talking about the Michael B. Jordan thing, that did throw me off. I knew, I knew the kid with the with the it's Creed. That's, yeah, that's I, Michael I was like, why the it. fuck are they so small, man? Like, okay, it threw me off because I, like you said, it's 10, 20 years ago. Oh, fuck. Yeah, twenty years ago. Even right? even D'Angelo, the guy who plays D'Angelo, like oh. a lot of people would probably remember him from The Water Boy. <laughs> I believe he was in that movie, if I'm not mistaken. The actor that plays him, uh, and then Lawrence Omar, Gil Gilead there, the junior, whatever. Uh, if that's there, his name, Gilead, uh, yeah, Andrew, yeah, the, I believe he was from The Water Boy, if I'm not Which, mistaken. Then he got uh, Michael Kenneth Williams, it was Omar, he was in lots of great things after this yeah, as he was well. A water boy. A yeah, see, <laughs> he was he was his buddy that was one of the football players in that, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, um. That's what I mostly knew him from back then at that point too, right? And uh, uh, Detective Lester Freeman, we've talked about. He was on. Uh, he was on lots of other things too. I believe he's also dead now. That actor, if I'm not mistaken, I might be wrong, but I think he died also. I, I, I he was on. Um, or maybe he died on the show. That's what I'm thinking of. Remember, he was on House of Cards. The last thing I seen him on, he was on House of Cards. He was the guy that owned the barbecue place. Lester Freeman. House of Cards. That one? I'm just trying to. I'm that, looking at the the, that the people. Clark That's Peters. Why. Uh, but yeah, John Doman, the guy who plays. Uh, I mean, uh, Rawls. That guy's awesome. He's been in lots of things I've seen. There's a great cast in this. Even even what's his name here? Uh, their lieutenant, um, Lieutenant uh, Cedric Daniels. Da, da, uh, Lance Reddick is the actor's name. I mean, he was he was on Oz before this, right? We were just yeah, talking yeah. about Oz, right, very recently. He was on. There's a lot of people on Oz that are on this. Bodie, the guy who played Bodie, was was on Oz, right? There's a, there's a lot of people from Oz that was on that were that ended up on this show, right? Um, I think Herc even was on that show, if I'm not mistaken, at one point. But th those characters on there, they would die very quickly. A lot of those guys, right? So Frankie Faison, the the commissioner there, he he's been in stuff I've seen. So yeah, just a great cast, a lot of good people. Racist Idris Elba, right Stringer Bell, huge. Wood Harris, Idris Elba is fucking probably the biggest actor out of this show, right? Um, yeah, honestly, so he's he's huge. So um, yeah, great cast. What else is so, he yeah, that's. Like I know I him, from, but I just I don't know the name. Like I'm trying to figure out what else he's doing. Like he's done. He's done lots of things. Lots of things. He was. I'm he was checking him out right now. He's the fast. But they're big stuff, eh? Right? Mandela. He was in one of the Star Treks. He was the villain in the the most recent Star Trek uh, reboot. He was in one of the films as a villain in one of them. Uh, Thor. Thor, yeah, he's in Thor. Yeah, no, I'm just okay. looking. Suicide. Yeah, he was in the most recent Suicide Squad movie. All kinds of things. This guy's a big actor, man. Uh, yeah, and uh, and almost everybody I think's like British. I think on this on this show, like, it's pretty crazy. Like no one, I think, uh, everybody came over and like uh, mastered the uh, the accent for this show at this time. Which is, again, I think at this time a lot of people weren't uh, used to uh, all the actors uh, playing these people that were coming from uh, England or wherever New Zealand. You know what I mean? Like all these places. Then you, you would start to see that a lot more. Um, as the years went on, like a lot more, right? a lot of Australian yeah. actors. I noticed that. Yeah, I think well, everybody's Nokia, coming from that way. And yeah, I just Elba's English. Like, there's like everybody. There's a lot of people that are, are not. Uh, you know, there's nobody from Baltimore. I think. Well, there is. Was the seasons go on? There is actual authentic, authentic like gangster type people that are on this show. But we can get into that. But yeah, so yeah, that's the first episode. Not too much. It kind of just really introduces the players. And uh, and uh, then we go into episode two, the detail. Uh, what do I have here? So on this on this episode, the main points I made were like they're they're kind of now starting to investigate the um, the drug dealers and try to learn all the players there. Uh, Bubs um, it basically starts becoming an informant. and He puts uh, dr uh, hats on drug dealers. Yeah, that he, was he has crazy. A, yeah, he has a thing with Kima, um, the um, one of the other detectives. One uh, of the cops, woman, yeah, one of the other covers. Black woman cop, um, and uh, also a lesbian, also as well. Um, she she um, 
hires him as an informant essentially because his buddy gets beat up. Like he he's trying to run game and like he's trying to like give him like fake bills in the pits. Yeah. And Bodie and a bunch of them beat him down, and um and 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 you learn a lot about D'Angelo's character early on. I think in these scenes too because like kind of like looks at them like after he's like what are we gonna do about this and he kind of was like list like he's like he, he kind of is not he's like do whatever you want like he walks away you know what i mean like he sees the bill and he's kind of like d'angelo doesn't you can tell to early on he doesn't have a taste for this kind of stuff anymore like he seems like he's kind of falling out of love of all the violence and the bullshit that goes on as associated with this and that obviously takes precedence as the season goes on for him right but i really d'angelo is one of my favorite characters when i first started watching this show i, I really like seems him. genuine yes i really liked him like he seemed like he actually has like uh i mean listen he, he's yeah i mean he's doing shit too don't get me wrong he's getting his hands dirty but he does actually have like a like a like a moral like you, you know what i mean like immoral like conscious moral compass yeah exactly yeah that, right so i think i think i think that's you see it right off from from the get-go when he's taking kid, and that's why i think feel like it, it worked better with him like when they said they threw him in the pit yeah over here because he works better with you know he, he's easy at keeping the kids round up well you can tell in too like sense. wallace there's a scene where he sees him playing with like a transformer or something like he's sitting there because these kids are just sitting around all day doing jack shit, just waiting for people like collections and like he counts the money yeah, and they, like, they took the money yeah and um and he's sitting there playing with a toy and he looks over and he like smiles and he, he reminds him it seems like of like a innocence of youth right and like he and then Bodie like sees him smiling at him and he's the one, guy that's trying to like move up like he's a bad like hard ass like guy who wants to like move up right in terms of the organization right of the drug dealing so he uh he sees it and he goes over and he slaps the fucking like toy out of his hand he's like pay attention that's why you're fucking up on the counter and all this shit right like that's but that's what i mean there's moments like that where you could tell like he, he had like a heart compared yeah. to some of these other guys like like these well, blooded killers right so i mean he just doesn't he has a look but he just you know he also had that innocent look to him too right like i mean look he's sitting right above your head there to the left this, <laughs> right yeah. so i mean it it, it uh it really does. He really plays that character well. I noticed that in, in the first little bit, you can tell that this guy is going to probably be one of the more genuine ones, yes. I think, out of the whole series. So I, it took me a while to figure out who Bell was, but yeah, in the beginning, right? Right away. Yeah. And he well, was just probably the guy with the clean name. Yeah. Stringer Bell. Yeah. So then they got their uh, basement operation going at this point. McNulty and Bunk uh, take D'Angelo in. And they make him feel guilty about some murders and try to associate his, his name with it. And they try to make him write out a letter in this episode to the to the parents of the person that got killed. And uh, and you know the lawyer comes in and makes a big stink about it and like don't you know don't write nothing. What are you doing? How many times do I have to tell you guys don't fucking do nothing? Because like he he's basically the hired lawyer that that works for this organization, right? So he. He, but even there, like they guilt him in a way, like he actually just feels bad about the people that ended up getting killed, whether or not they were meant to get killed. Like he kind of feels like, like he, you know what I mean? Like he doesn't want innocent people that are not part of the game as a result of all this, this bullshit that they do getting, you know, getting killed. Right. So he kind of, he yeah. does, he feels bad even from there. They kind of get to him a little bit, right. From, right from the start. And, um, but who wants the innocent people that can be killed? No, of course, of course. And then and then uh there's a there's a whole scene where like the rookie cops, Herc and uh and Carver and especially sure. Prez Belusky. Prez Belusky, you find out he's like uh some guy in another part of the city, like he's like high up, is like the uh, father in law for this fucking idiot. Yeah. And uh and he, he he's a he's a he he uh fucked up and that's why they got sent to this task squad because they don't want to like him to lose his job essentially but they basically just stuck him there and he's a pain in the ass in that sense and uh they go and they pistol whip somebody yeah well he's he's got hot hands this guy right he doesn't know how to handle a gun right and it's uh but they basically get fed up because of the way they're being treated in this case and they take it to the streets prez uh pistol whip someone and uh then they end up getting bottled and had tvs thrown at them and then they're basically their 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 cruiser by the next morning is totally goes on fire is toasted like they basically just like steal everything out of it they steal the shotgun from the towers uh, right the police yeah the police issue warranted uh shotgun that's out of uh, the car they, yeah they they basically go there in the middle of the night they try to start some shit because they're 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 uh drunk and they're fed up 
And uh, yeah, they, he ends up fucking. So kid loses his eye, loses his eye, like some 14 year old kid or something that was talking shit to them. He ends up pistol whipping him in the eye. And later on, you find out that he's blind out of his eye because of this asshole and he wants to press charges, right? Because of this guy's fuck up. And then there's this whole. I mean, it kind of goes on into the next episode, but there's this whole thing exchange between him and Daniels and Daniels tries to cover for him. Like he tries to tell them, like, get your fucking story straight. Like, what were you doing there in the middle of the night? And they were honest with them. He's like, don't tell me that you guys were there trying to follow up on some leads. Don't fucking, he's like, yeah, you idiot. Like, don't tell me that you, that what you guys were doing. So you guys better all say the same story. Right. He's like, my ass. Yeah. And then your ass and then whatever else. Right. And, and then he feels like even then he feels like responsible and he's like, well, sh should I like, um, you know, go and report this guy? And then he's like, listen, I got to have my men's back. Like he's telling his wife later on. Then he gets the call that the kid lost his eyesight and he's just like, fuck, that's how like the episode ended. He's, he's just like, look what I got, who I got to protect. Like these assholes, right? Like essentially. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty great. Um, hmm. But McNulty, uh, I wrote down here, lives like a bum. <laughs> He's got an empty apartment. <laughs> Bro, like... That's what you find out. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's single, as Jay said. <laughs> but yeah, he's got, uh, you know, that's that's what he's dealing with. So that's basically all I wrote down for uh, episode two for, for that one. And, uh, oh, man, Jay in the freezing. Uh, so episode three, the episode two, uh, they mentioned that was called the detail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. JT's got cheap internet. And then we got episode three, uh, the buys. Okay. Uh, things are wrote down for this one. Uh, D'Angelo, this is a great scene. This is one of my favorite scenes. Actually, D'Angelo teaches the project dealers how to play chess and he compares it to the game so they could relate. Like he talks about like these are this is the stash house, the castle, and it can only move like this. This is that this is the queen. She gets busy, like she's the shooter or whatever. Like she, you know what I mean? Like she can go any which way. Yeah. And then uh, and then he talks about the king. And he's like, and then he's like, How about these bald headed motherfuckers? Like what he's like about the pawns? He's like, No, nah, it's the pawns. He's like, he's like he pawn gets all the way to the end, and he becomes the king. And he's like, Well, how about the king? And he's like, The king's always the king, like nothing changes, right? Like he's like, the king's always the king. Like pawns in this game they get taken out quick like he's trying to say like this is them like basically yeah. little little like people that are like you know what i mean not be a part of the big picture in terms of that um all the guys that are just dealing the drugs right are essentially the pawns that's what he was trying to say and uh and then there was the whole boat he's like yeah well what like if it's a smart ass pawn right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i let that's one of my that's one of my favorite scenes from this season honestly is how he relates everything to the to the game to teach these kids who were playing um, checkers. We were playing on were like with chess pieces, using it as a checkerboard because they didn't know how to play chess, right? <laughs> well, there's a lot of people that used to do that. I remember man, yeah. growing up watching that. I'm thinking, oh, okay. Chess is a much more complicated game, right? I mean, I get it. but Pretty yeah. simple. But, I mean, really, if you just pay attention and do it, it's not that hard. But it, you got to you get more strategic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so uh then you got um uh, avon uh they they identify and get the first picture of this guy because they have no idea what this guy looks like this whole time they've been investigating they can't get a picture or, or drop on avon like they don't know what he looks like they don't know who he is and uh lester freeman this was his time to shine he figures out that they mentioned he used the box and he was a golden glove boxer. So he goes down to the boxing area, the uh, boxing place where he knows in, in Baltimore, he knows them. And yeah. he's able to identify him and get an old ass picture of him when he was a golden gloves boxer back in the day. Avon. So they finally have a picture that's like 20 fucking years old or something, but it's of Avon. It's the first um, time they've actually identified him as like, this is who he look. This is what he used to look like or this is who he is right so this whole time they're running around and they they this guy runs such a tight operation they've never seen this guy these guys don't touch the drugs right they basically are behind the scenes and they get everybody else to do everything for them right so um just like snowfall i mean that's the same thing with uh with them as they go on and certain people in franklin i guess in snowfall uh yeah and 
I don't know, Jay. I don't know why it's doing that. You want to leave and come back again? Feel free. I can just continue on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah. Give me a sec. Yeah. I'm going to try something else. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then basically the other big thing that happens in this episode is that it's the intro of Omar. Uh, I mean, this is basically uh, he's trying to find their stash. Um, he robs the stash. And someone ends up saying his name in the in the process, and that gets back to Avon, and then they find out that he's the one that robbed them, and it kind of starts sparks uh, the beef up uh, between Avon and Omar, basically for the rest of this season, his people and uh, and and Omar. Uh, Omar's kind of like a stick up guy. He robs drug dealers, kind of like a Robin Hood type of shit. Like he gives back to people in the uh, in the, in the, the hood and stuff like that, and helps out certain folks you know, gets what he needs to get by in terms of money and stuff like that. He's got a crew of people working with him. Um, You know, he's gay. He has a a guy that works with him as well that I think is like his lover essentially. And, uh, and there's like another guy that like, uh, I guess is a stick up kid for him, but these guys, they can't really live in that area and they got to lay low after they do these jobs because they're always a target essentially as a result of going up against these drug dealers. Right. So they become, um, you know, uh, someone to look out for. So they can't really just walk around those areas freely after they pull these jobs, right? Um, Because they don't even really go in with disguises or masks or anything like that. This guy's just running up in there with his shotgun, robbing the place. And um, unfortunately, though, they used his name and word got back to Avon and he finds out who he is. So he kind of puts it out on the streets that they're looking for this guy and becomes like a thorn in Avon's side. Well, they both basically become a thorn in each other's side as uh, time goes on. And, uh, but yeah, what's going on? I don't know, bro. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, guys, this happens. Unfortunately, even on, on a pre-recorded episode, sometimes the internet isn't being cooperative. So we'll try to move on. I just mentioned this, the intro of Omar. He basically robs a, a, um, Yvonne's stash house in this. He finds out where the stash house is after investigating Jay and, uh, this is where they drop his name accidentally. Is uh, the guy who's his lover or whatever the guy is one of his guys that he robs places with stick us to sticks people up. They say his he says uh, he says Omar's name and then word gets back to Avon that it's this Omar guy and they kind of put the word out that they're looking for him after this. They become a thorn in each other's side essentially, right? But I was no, also thinking, thinking was one like one side and one's the other side, like one's the east side's part of Baltimore, one's the west side. I got I was trying to figure that out, right? Because I think they're not is. close to each other, right? Like, because he knows Prop Proposition Joe, which is a character that you get to meet from the West Side later on in the season, right? Mm-hmm. So I think, like, I think Omar might be from there, but it's one of those things where, like, they don't—he doesn't really know of him, and then when he comes around, then um, you know, and he learns of his name, and they get word, but and they kind of put word out there of who, he, like, who they're looking for. That's kind of when he gets to know him a little bit better. But he doesn't really know Omar Avon at this point so he is probably from the west side i think you're right about that because he does know the west side people you know his proposition proposition joe's from the west side uh that's where uh, method man comes into play too method man i believe when he comes into the next season if it's two or three he pops up he's also i think from the west side and then they start moving their operation into uh the east so there's some yeah there's a little bit of crossover between that and it's one of those things where in the city even though it's like not too far away, it's two different worlds, right? Because yeah, just different of, like but ghettos. Yeah, and in terms of your crew, and in terms of like the area you can hold down you and run. sell drugs on, exactly. So yeah. it becomes like that. There is a lot of shit like this, like because it's from the same era, just different. I think because it's the uh, California thing and snowfall, but there's a lot of similar type of stuff that goes on in terms of the drug trade in both, right? Just like. Um, at Franklin's boy that um, from I forgot his name, but the short dude, um, you know, he had the afro at first. And the oh, other yeah, a little easy there. Yeah. So he or ice cube he lives okay. essentially in a low rises. You yeah. know what I mean? Like he's the yeah. guy that's from that area in in uh, in yeah, California. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Compton or whatever. Right. So, yeah, so that's so that's that's what I mean. There's a lot of par- that's I mean, a lot of the shows, I think, owe a lot Parallels. to this show. Because of that, the fact that this was one of the first ones to do it like this, right? Honestly, so um, it, it was. It, I, it, you know, I noticed that too. I mean, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of little things that you pick. I picked up from this one that I I recognize. Oh shit, that was from you know that, that reminds me of this. That reminds me of this. 
You know and what I mean? So probably right. That's what I mean. Like we had a lot of like throughout the nineties, a lot of hood movies, but not really shows. Like not this, really TV you know shows. I mean? No, that's what I mean. So this is probably one of the first of its kind. This in the night for for early two thousands. You would think. Yeah, and not only just explaining the drug trade, but also explaining like like I said, the cops and the, and the tapping and stuff. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna uh, get into the pager tapping. I mean, yeah, if we haven't mentioned it yet, I mean, because I don't think they've gotten to that point as of yet, even in the third episode, because they actually got to get them to um, sign off on it in terms of the courts. But the reason why the show is called The Wire is because they actually they do tap a lot of the phones. They put wires on people like they They do get into that whole um, investigative type shit that was kind of new at this time, I think, for cops as well. Like they, or they're finally getting approval to do in terms of these big Rico cases, like big drug cases that basically, uh, you know, as as the years have gone on, you've heard about them doing big beatdowns here. And there, yeah. There, right. So. Yeah. Uh, and then, then there was a great scene with Stringer in this uh, when uh, D'Angelo goes goes to visit him and he gives him the first week's collection from the pits, and he praises him on how good he's doing and he gives him the tip. And you mm-hmm. find out that they run their operations out of Orlando's, which is the strip club that Orlando is basically the guy who's the clean guy on paper that they have his name uh, written down who runs the joint for them. He's the not big a Afro Jerry Curl, right? Afro he's Puff. Not, he's, yeah, like a pimp. Looks like Cat Williams. Yeah, but he's not, they're not, he's actually not part of their drug trade. He basically, no. like, yeah, the legal guy in terms of the paperwork. Laundering uh, money. Yeah. So he, um stringer though when he goes to drop off the money because that's where they drop off their collections and stuff he has a really great speech and scene in this about how how he's like oh yeah we're gonna be putting this new product out let them know like get the word out there and he's like you're doing really great this is the best i've ever seen from the pits or whatever and, and he's like oh it's supposed to be some good shit everyone's talking shit about this is how weak it is the recent drugs and he's stringer just looks at him and he's like the drugs are gonna sell either way it doesn't fucking matter he's like we it's all shit he's like you it's all weak out there right now he's like well we'll just rebrand the shit and put some other put in some other different vial and put it out there and they're going to buy it either way. Like he basically explains that to them. Right. So it's, it's really interesting in that sense, um, how he makes that observation. Right. Uh, and then, and then there's the whole, there's another great scene in this with they're basically, um, they're getting their one uh, buddy there, the black cop who's uh, new to this case too, that they brought from somebody somewhere else. What's his name? Uh, I'm looking at for right now, Corey, uh, Detective Leandor Sidnor, Sidnor is what his name is. This guy played Corey Parker Robinson. He, um, at the end of this, Bubs has to give him some pointers about how to look like a like a drug addict, essentially. Like he, because he's gonna go in undercover as a drug addict with uh, Bubs in the hood. Yeah. And there's that whole great scene, uh, Jay, where he lifts the bottom of his shoe and he's like, "There's no dead soldiers on the bottom of these," and he has to let him know about. It. If you're walking around the hood gotta be stepping on vials all day your shoes look like this and he like lifts his shoe and he shows them yeah. and he's like you're gonna get spotted like right away as a as a cop right and and he feels like so stupid that they overlook like these type of things but of course he would know he's like he's like come on man he's like you can't just be walking around all day and then you look like you still look clean and you're not like you, you know, know the I mean? shoes like guy wear man at the flip-flop with the fucking hanging on by one piece you exactly know? you gotta yeah. know what you have yeah. right so yeah yeah that so was... yeah that's that, yeah that was a good scene too so that's basically the third episode those are the things i mentioned i wrote down that i wanted to mention you started taking notes on the fourth or fifth one there Jay. fifth one after uh they they, okay. they they found the body so yeah basically at this point they're 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 you know they're establishing they they've got an idea who avon is dude they're uh, trying to get the the best part i think it was in that episode too was either three or four that it came out it came in it, it, where they're trying to get the desk in the door yes at the start the cold the cold <laughs> open yeah, yeah, yeah and the the guy's like man i'm trying to herc's like i'm trying to get this desk in there and there's like three co- other cops trying to help him they're like in they're all pushing trying to push it out oh, like yeah. <laughs> and this guy's fucking pushing against them yeah that was a funny intro so and they bad. get so pissed like the fucking lieutenant's just like yeah he's like get back to fucking work <laughs> like, it's like, holy just, fuck, fuck. He's so mad, yeah. Like everyone's just like, "Fuck this!" So they just walk off, all pissed off. Um, but yeah, so basically, yeah, they're establishing. Um, they're trying to learn all the players. They're you're doing their board up right now with all the pictures and stuff like that. Yeah. If not at this point, um, I think it's gonna be the next episode. Like eventually, um, 
Lester Freeman is uh, revealed to be like some super cop that they weren't utilizing. And Prez Belusky, because of the shit that he got into because of the uh, uh, his pistol whipping the guy and all that other shit, they, they basically start keeping him in-house. And he actually falls into the work and loves it and is actually really fucking good at putting shit together. Like he together finds, and stuff. Yeah, he, he, like, I like puzzles. Like he finds his passion by yeah. putting all this information together and he actually helps out the case big time with a few Huge. big developments. Yeah. Like he yeah. figures out the thing with how they're phoning each other on the pagers on the burners, like how the code the codes and they're this. using. Yeah. So he, 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 he's a, he's a big help actually in the case, like as the, as it goes on, like yeah. uh, once he finds, I remember, yeah. you remember going through pages and, and, and using pages and using like codes, but I don't remember using like it would getting that in, intricate. You know what no. I mean? That, that was pretty crazy when yes. they, they started breaking it down. Right. Yes. Uh, but yeah, so then we get into episode four, which is called, uh, old cases. Um, I think this is where they dig up some older homicide type stuff that they're trying well, to and McNulty gets. Yeah. They, they try to pass stuff off to McNulty and say, you know, to, you know, try to get this one done. And then they end up helping them out big time. All those guys. Yes. So the big scene in this, which again is one of the best scenes I think of this season that a lot of people point, like if you were to go to YouTube and said like best scenes, the wire, this one's usually in the reel of all the best scenes is this one. It's a scene where bunk and McNulty go to the old homicide case, which is connected to D'Angelo. Cause they're talking about tapping on the window and the fact that this girl ended up getting killed. That was like an old girlfriend of Avon Barksdale. And the whole time that they're like, they're they're check him and bunker basically uh checking out the place they're um they're saying fuck the whole time they're like fuck 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 he's like fuck fuck they're like finding all these like clues and by the end of it they uncover everything they uncover the shell casing outside just based off the trajectory and you actually see them do like old school police work where they're like well if the guy's here and i'm here and the bullet went there and they fish like a like a shell case a, a bullet out of like the fridge you know what i mean like that well, was a, it's so good they did amazing. it like it was nothing yeah, but the whole time they're just like shit, fuck, fuck, fuck. They're just like they're like no, like fuck, fuck. And then like they they actually pictured the tapping on the window. They figured it all out in a matter of like five minutes. And the guy that like owns the building that let them in there, he's like looking at them. He's like, what the hell? Like these cops like just figure out the whole shit. Like they just cracked the case right open. Like this whole yeah. this old dead homicide case. Like it's yeah. it's cold. Like they can't figure out who did it. Right. Let's like, just show it how good out. they are at this. So good, yeah. And that's great Bunks scene. and, and McNulty, right? Yeah, Bunk and McNulty. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And the cigar. Yeah. Saw, I love right. how he walks in with the cigar just sitting in his mouth, bro. Yeah, yeah. I just walk into a crime scene with the with the cigar chilling right there, you know. Yeah, yeah. no, he's great, and oh. uh, and then yeah, in this episode, they really focus on this whole D'Angelo story about him supposedly killing somebody, and uh. And this is the one where Prez Belusky figures out the pagers method, like basically how they're calling each other on the pagers, basically. Um, he figures it out. Like it's if you look at he like scans the phone, he like photocopies it and flips it and is able to basically uh, show that um, the way that they're doing the numbers is they're crisscrossing them. So if you wanted to do a three, do a one. And then if you want to do like a five, a three, sorry, no, if it's, if you want to do a nine, it's a one. And if it's a three, it's like a seven or something like that. You basically got to jump the middle number and you do the opposite number basically when they're doing, they're dialing to each other. Right. That's, yeah. you think that's how it worked. Yeah. Yeah. It was doing that at every other number, like it would, you know, oh seven at the end and, and to tell you which page, which phone it's coming from or whatever. All right. And, uh, we just cut out a bit there for, <laughs> yeah, no fuck, for hoping apologies so far for some of the lag that we've been experiencing on jay's side but uh hopefully we should uh, be better off now he restarted his uh i'm hoping yeah so fingers we'll crossed guys I yeah, apologize why, you know i'm not trying to hog the conversation but there's been a lot of freezing happening on jay's side so i'm trying to continue talking so it's not so distracting for you guys <laughs> for that You're great uh, at it yeah okay so we're just talking about episode four about the whole thing about uh bunk and mcnulty solving that homicide case essentially in the room uh you know what i mean just uh together um just on one shot yeah it's pretty crazy how they do that theory and like you know the whole thing about like um placing yourself in the scene of the crime and like you know the the, the whole uh shit that they do uh forensics and all this kind of stuff right like uh, yeah. they, you know it and they, they gotta talk 
knowing how far a shell casing will come out of a gun, like, you know what I mean? How far it'll fling. Like he was able to determine based on where the shoot it, shooting happened, where it would be. And he finds it in the grass and they find the actual bullet in the actual fridge because it kind of it bounced off or something. And yeah, somebody was looking in the fridge when they were get, when they got shot. Yeah, and they did. Then they did crazy. that. They took all the crime scene photos and they kind of spread it all out over the room. And they're like, okay, if the body's here, I'll put the photo here. And if this was here, and like they it, it, the way they they case the whole thing, like it's 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 pretty. It's an awesome scene. Like it kind of shows you like old school police work. And like at this point in time, they would probably have an even more advanced way about going about those things. But the kind of way that they did it in this, it was very impressive to see. Right? Like it, honestly, it was a great scene. And it kind of no three D scanning rooms anymore. They had to use it off of old brain power. Right? Yeah. No, it was crazy. It was really to great. think like a, a killer. Also, in this episode, you do get to see the first time. Uh, um, kind of like a gay scene between Omar uh, after they rob um, another yet another stash house because uh, they start switching the location up and stuff like that. He robs another stash point uh, from Avon's people and um, and they're all kind of chilling and kind of planning their next moves because these are guys that after they rob people, they can't just walk up and down the block right i mean they're well known at this point so they kind of got to go and go into hiding or lay low for a while and plan the next mission essentially right so like these guys they're kind of chatting amongst one another and there's like the third dude that's with him and the guy that omar's with essentially that's like i guess works for him works with and uh, they're sitting on the stairs and he's playing with his hair like uh like uh, jay said there's a scene where he's like playing with his hair and and uh, afterwards, like his buddy, like he kind of looks disgusted at what's going down. He's like, yeah, you know, I'm going to get up out of here now and we'll talk soon and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, and then he says to him, he looks at him with like, he gives, uh, he's like, keep it close. <laughs> and, then, like, and then the guy like turns his head, like he starts walking down the like the alleyway and he keeps like turning around. He gives him like a weird crook eye of some yeah. sort. And but Omar too, the way he kind of comes on to him, he like kind of grabs him, and he's like, ah, like <laughs> he puts his arm on his shoulder. Yeah, you know, he's like, like, yeah, okay, man, that's cool, we're cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep your cut, keep it close. Keep it close. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like yes, he's moving back. Yeah. Yeah, that was good, man. Yeah. Moving no, was... further back. Uh, <laughs> so the first introduction to kind of like Omar's. Yeah. boyfriend there yeah yeah that was the first one and um uh, and um yeah this is the again other than that case that they broke open the homicide case that they're going to try to link to d'angelo because d'angelo at least the rumor that's going around is the guy that was responsible for killing that person because it was a and what he went to jail for essentially like he had come out of jail for is that is that murder because um or suspicion i guess of that murder is that's the word that was going around is he's the one that killed his avon's old uh, girlfriend who said she was going to snitch to the cops essentially about what was going on with him. Right. So they went, yeah. they had to kill him. Uh, later on, of course, you find out that it actually wasn't D'Angelo at all. D'Angelo was also pawn- a conned into being in the wrong place at the wrong time so they could set up that kill. And it was actually Weebay, you find out that was the shooter in that situation, which you find out later on and, and then we'll get to that but at that point d'angelo basically wants to turn his back on the whole organization because he's like fuck these guys they, they're not looking out for me my well-being at all like he just kind of is done with them at that point but you find out that he's been taking the credit for this murder because it kind of helps with his rep i guess around the projects and shit like that that people think that it was d'angelo that did this thing right so, yeah um so basically and then there's another um yeah they find out the pager method uh press Belusky, and then um uh, i thought that was more in episode six they were trying to really find out like I, I they really found out the method they were working on putting it all together and how they were in that one and, and tapping the, the actual phones right the actual pay phones yeah. no i have it i have it. you know what's so funny though is yeah. is that you could tell which phones and who's supplying the company because those are in the ghetto. They still had brand new Verizon wire, Verizon fucking phones. I, I couldn't, I, I was having a hard time, you know, putting yeah. that all together instead of having all beat up phones. Like I'm used to seeing growing up. Right. But the thing is too, like, 
you know, even at that time, that's why they're all using the pagers because of when this show takes place. Like we were talking about, this is in 2002 where it was kind of already phased out by the early stages of cell phones at that time. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, it's kind of interesting, um, you know, to see that, like that they're still running around with the pagers and pay phones and this, but then at this point in time, they thought that they were, um, not able to get picked up on unless you got taps, which is established in this, in this show, there was all these methods of, all these rules that they had for themselves that they were trying to like trying to be careful of not getting pinched by the cops was like, don't talk in the car. Don't, you know what I mean? Don't uh, like all these things that they had, you go to a pay phone. It was just bit. So they, they knew about wires obviously, but they were, it was to avoid that kind of shit. Right. They thought yeah. that they couldn't, you know, like burner cell phones essentially, which become a thing later on in this show as well. Like it's like the old, like ones you used to buy like from Seven Eleven and shit like that. That doesn't, well, yeah thing in in this in the show as well there's burner cell phones right? i mean you know prior to this obviously show in that time uh they did have wiretaps stuff like that right so i mean they knew about all that kind of stuff but it was more hardwired bigger equipment stuff like that you know what right. i mean like it was harder to get into and, and probably get warrants for and having you know you have to get into the place before you could actually you know do it so you know these guys to be honest with you were smart keeping it ahead they were using basic technology that you know you know and codes um yeah no so you're right i it's not i think the presbaluski thing in this one but it, i put down here cop figures out the pagers method it's lester freeman who figures something out about the way they're communicating with the pagers in this one this is basically where they and the they lester started. guy was like you said it was the cop that went to the uh the, uh, the box the, no 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 but wasn't he that old school cop the one that the black yeah. cop He's yeah, the one that figures it out. And this is when McNulty turns to him and he's like, Oh, I gotta buy you a drink. He's like, just one, right? Like, this is when yeah. they kind of talk and he gets to know who Lester Freeman really is. And then he asks about him around, like asks well, around about him, and he mentions it to Bunk. And he's like, Oh, yeah, no, he's he used to work. What unit was he part of? Like, which one did he get the de demoted to? Like he said he came from the pawn shop unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then he explains how what he basically does. So you first you gotta tag it, and then you gotta identify this, and then you would put it in the database said item in the pawn shop or whatever. That it's basically for people that sell stolen goods to pawn shops. That's basically what he did, yeah. as a, he because he left the homicide right, and then by yeah. the end of this season, he actually goes back to homicide because of his involvement in this case, right? But at the time, he had ended up leaving because he fell out of love with it, right? That's why he ended up going to the pawn shop. Yeah. Uh, right so um yeah so yeah that's basically the big things that happen in this episode i would say um but it has a lot to do with the murder like i said the d'angelo murder and the, the omar thing about robbing another stash house and yeah and there's some lester freeman type stuff that happens in this so then going into episode five now jay you also you know you can join in here in terms of things you had pointed out with your notes there this one's called the pager and this is where I think, like, this, they, they really kind of figure things out in terms of, I think, the way the communication's going, I think, later on. Yeah, Pre Prez figures out the phone trick I had written down here for episode five. Yeah, right? they're starting to figure out the pagers and how they're using yeah. the codes, right? Yeah, so first in episode but four I with Lester, they figure out how they're communicating with the pagers, like, what basically that they're doing it. And then in the well, they start part, realizing they're using the pages, and yes. then in the sixth one, sorry, they call it the wire, which is showing that they're, they're, they're figuring out how the tap works, right? Because the, in order to even have admissible evidence for them to bring to court, they have to, there has to be somebody on top of a building. Like during this whole time, we've seen a lot of cops are taking pictures of all the people that they they basically are putting on their board and they're they're creating their case and figuring out all the players right mm -hmm. and while doing this there's always been a couple of cops on lookout on one of the buildings across from the projects taking pictures yeah. but eventually as time goes on and they actually get their wiretap written up and allowed through the courts for them um it, they have them on certain pay phones that are by the stash houses and the cop actually has to identify who's calling and using the payphone and at what time so they can then tap into it. And only then, after being on the phone for so long, can they actually start taking this doc document if it's something, if they're talking about like 
there's a scene where uh, Bodie's hitting on his girlfriend. They're talking fucking uh, phone, phone sex, sex right? yeah. and they're like, you can't use that. Like he's been on the fucking phone, like for two minutes. What, how are you going to explain you're jerking off listening to this shit? Because they, because they say something like five minutes into this shit. He's just like, yeah. ah, I'm just listening, whatever. Right. Because, but if they start talking about crime shit or lingo or whatever, like, you know what I mean? Like then they can actually use it in the court of law. So that whole thing's interesting too, how that works. Like, honestly. And I think, again, you see a lot of that shit in cop shows now, like they talk about all that kind of shit, but this was not stuff I was familiar with at that time when I started watching this show, you know what I mean? Like, honestly, like this kind of stuff you've heard about wiretaps, but not to the point where they break it down. Like, I think this was very detailed. How they well, that's what I mean. It was getting, yeah. it was just going to say that it was, it gets very detailed in how they do it because by this time, you already really know, I mean, in the 2000s, how wiretaps and all that stuff work, right? I mean, yes. really, but for them to break it down on how they had to do it and how it all started off, compared to what it is now, I don't think they have to do anywhere near that kind of fucking surveillance and shit like they do, like yeah. they had to do back then, right? To prove it was this person doing it, to prove it was this person using a pager. Because of the pagers, that's another thing. You got to you gotta also prove that it was them, a the certain person making that message saying that the, sh that the call was for the drugs or for the whatever right so they had to make sure that it all lined up according yeah yeah uh it's but big yeah task force yeah yeah but episode five the pager it opens up with that big scene with omar there your favorite there when he's yeah, i was thing gets killed no worries but his his, his uh, boyfriend gets killed and it happens they, in this found out yeah they found that yeah. they find his body on the well, they, they try to make it look like a suicide sort of thing. But, I mean, this guy was pretty beat up, dude. I don't think they made it look like a suicide. What they well, did was Avon wanted him displayed for everybody so they mm -hmm. could see what happened to the guy that fucked around with him, basically, to help his rep. You know what I mean? So they wanted him as a as a message to everybody like this is what happens if you fuck with me like he that's why they had him like stretched out on on top of a car and burned to a crisp and all this other shit they did they tortured him essentially yeah cigarette like, burns yeah. fucking yeah took his eyes out basically but, basically but his this, eyes out right but this episode starts off with omar there whistling coming down the street onto another stash house and the guy runs down the alley and he fucking cuts him off and uh and then he's like oh the cheese stands alone and he like you know he raises his shotgun to him and yet he had another drug dealer that he successfully is able to fuck over at the start of this right because at this time he's already hit him up this is like the third time like he's going on avon hard like he's got the drop on because avon's not the guy who's personally coming around this area and he's not bringing the people they figure a stash here some money there or whatever they can they kind of keep it rolling and they just kind of try to change where they're stashing it every day, but Avon's basically got it, their whole operation figured out from surveillance at this point, right? Like he figures everything out at this point. It seems like he's got the drop on them and he's coming at them like it's constantly, right? Well, I, see, I, I remember, okay, so in that one, this is still on, we're still on what, five, right? It's episode five now, yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're still on that part. So, so yeah, so he's, he's kind of fucking pissed off. This is when they, the, the, you know they don't really get into they see that the, the body's there they see near the end that the body's there and stuff like that right mm -hmm. and uh and uh it, it was really you know it, they left it for a lot of the younger crowd to see in the in the uh in the projects there so that they they all figured it out because i think if i'm not mistaken that's or was it the next episode where i have it as this one but i had where where wallace and then make the call about the body yeah so wallace is the guy that tips off um the fact that um omar's boyfriend there is uh, in greek town or something they went they were trying to go they were going to get food at, later in the evening and then they're away from their, their pit where they normally are and he sees him and he calls from a payphone he calls d'angelo d'angelo calls stringer Stringer sends Weebay and them down to snatch up this guy from Greek Town because he was at an arcade or something like that. He saw him at right, yeah. and uh, Omar knew all this. And later on, when he actually when they bring him in, uh, McNulty and them in like the next episode or whatever, whenever they bring him in and they talk about this, he knew all this shit. But like obviously they weren't together at that time when this went down, right? And and uh, but as you see after this happens it really fucks up Wallace cause he clearly didn't know what they were going to do to him. He just knew that he had to look out for this guy. He didn't really think about it. You know what I mean? So like, and he's a young kid. So I think this is the start of that though, is that this point 
he calls it in and doesn't really think twice about it because he just knows that D'Angelo is his friend and he wants to tip him off. And he said, keep an eye out for this guy if you see him, right? And yeah. that's what ends up happening is it's literally right in front of the buildings. Like Wallace is like some kid that lives. Well, they're in- building his character really good too right yeah. now at this point, right? Wallace's yeah. character too, starting Absolutely. to slowly build it up. Like him and Omar's part, I noticed in this episode, start to pick up a little bit more. I mean, Wallace, don't get me wrong, was in there the whole time, right? But with him, D'Angelo and stuff like that. But Omar and that are really introduced in that in this next couple of episodes here quickly yes. and then you know he disappears again on us. Because if it's not right? in this if it's not in this one, you see another one like basically he, he lives in one of those rundown fucking houses that's in there, like the stash houses, and he yeah. takes care of all the young kids that seem like they don't Bro, have he's to what a great kid. That's yeah. the next episode, episode six. There yeah, but go. yeah, so that's what I mean. Just to your point though, about how they start developing walls. He's stealing the fucking yeah, he steals the fucking the poor kid stealing the electric electricity and taking care of i don't know if it's this younger kid younger brothers or sisters or something i don't think so i think they're just like kids he's even waking up his boy too that's in there with the another one that's in there with a girl right yeah he's like the fucking wake up call in the morning man yeah right yeah but yeah so he's a good kid i mean that's what you start to get and you figure out and this is the episode too like i told you earlier about how Bodie's jealous of him because d'angelo takes the shining to him and you can tell in this one right oh yeah they have sort of they're almost like the same sort of character in a sense right. one's a little older though right and and he and he's kind of seeing him through he reminds him of him at that age Himself, yeah like, and he wants to save him before he makes the same mistakes and he's in the position that he is in right now because you know he came from a family that that's all they knew and you learn that later on when you he really breaks all that shit down for them towards the end of the season about who he is who his father was and who you know what i mean like the fact that he kind of came up into this shit right like you see his mother and being involved in some in some capacity like basically like has no choice in snowfall exactly uh but yeah you pit kids see omar's boy uh d'angelo asked the stripper out in this episode as well there's a stripper that he kind of tried to talk to in orlando's previous to this episode and she wasn't giving him the time of day um but in this he again takes a a liking to her because she was honest like there's a guy that accuses her of stealing his money and she just gives him the money and like basically lets them leave and he's like did you steal that man's money he's like she's like no i just didn't want to deal with him anymore like that was enough like you know what i mean like she she gave him the money and uh just because he accused her of, of stealing it and everything else and yeah he, and he makes enough he's she, he, she's making enough there anyways man right right so she Instead of the headache and she doesn't do any of the other shit. she just kind of works for tips and drinks and all this yeah. kind of shit, right so so he kind of likes her and uh and he has, ends up asking her out and uh, and uh in this episode and uh i think this is when he actually finally she agrees because at first she doesn't give him the time of day and i think from here on out i think he starts to date her i think for after this one but there's also a great mcnulty scene where he's putting together furniture drunk and from ikea <laughs> which I've, I've experienced that's not well, a fun experience man. yeah i looked at him and i'm and i'm th- I, I honestly i thought of you with those with those uh um bookshelves book, bookshelves that we yeah. went to pick up right so that's what i thought of i said i was thinking Nico trying to fucking put together the bookshelves when he's having has a few drinks in him oh man that's hilarious i still i don't try to do it at all man like it's still sitting in the box there you go see this is the thing too like where they kind of they talk about like the fact that mcnulty's having uh, marriage issues at this point and he he's trying to get custody of the kid like he's trying to allow the wife the wife to let him has he the kids more often but as you see as time goes on like he's not the best like he'll bring them on like conversations with criminals and shit like that you know what i mean like yeah, he bring criminals around yeah he's, yeah, he's, he's like cop. sorry it's my day to watch the kids so like there's shit like that going on and the wife like he he left him because he was cheated on her with that fucking uh district attorney uh the lawyer chick that's in this right but i mean uh, uh anyways but um this is also the episode where they first bring in bodie um they try to arrest him and uh he tells the cop to suck his dick or whatever and that's where they they, they they arrest him and eventually it goes there's that whole thing between uh him herc and uh carver not in this episode but with him and the uh like the group home or what you know like they like the the thing that they, halfway else halfway yeah they basically put him in one of these facilities for young kids right that juvenile like, oh that's when he gets breaks out yeah preston right 
but but yeah, that's that's all I had for this episode. Anything else you had here for episode five or no, no, everything coming in now here. Most of it's coming in six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve. Okay. That's where all my pages went. Well, there we go. <laughs> episode six. This is this is the episode called The Wire. Okay. Yeah, this is I, where I started writing everything down. Uh Omar's boy there shows up dead for all to see and to send a message. That's basically how the episode Well, yeah. Goes. And the kids, yeah, the kids that ratted. And told Brandon. him where he was that they were the ones who seen him in the morning oh not brandon no brandon is a bub's friend who i forgot to mention is now in a rehab as of the last episode because like he got beat up and then he had to go like he he's struggling right like his, his buddy brandon like that's the, yeah the white guy he's white got guy. a heavy attic that's he's right heavy anyway, attic, I mean. yeah omar's boy shows up and uh but wait this is this is when in this episode two you start to um see a lot of interference from the police force trying to shut this case down well yeah this is where yeah where you see mcnulty getting fucking taken off of uh, after he's worked nights all fucking that's right uh all night with the with this his patrol there with the with the wire group right right he gets put on day patrol too and he has to do all that but then they start racking in cases man they start putting clothes in the mall and say fuck you guys man but up to this point they were kind of like oh yeah whatever let's see what becomes of this from this point on for the rest of the season the city's trying to bring this case in they want drugs on the table they want a little bit of money they want the press they want to be able to talk about this in the press and and say hey look look at what we're doing and look we're at doing this. something exactly daniels wants to get a promotion so he wants to close this case out because they're dangling that over his head. McNulty wants to fucking solve this thing and do as much as possible and be a good cop. Right way, yeah. Right. And he keeps busting his balls about his pressure of him trying to bring it in. And it's kind of like this back and forth relationship between his superiors and his, the people that he that report to him throughout the whole rest of the season. Honestly, like it's a whole back and forth. And like, there's so many times where it looks like they're going to bring it, uh, bring it all in and shut everything down. And something happens, whether it's McNulty going to the judge to get the extension the or judge is the best here. He right, goes to talk right, to the right, judge. Right. He always brings the district attorney with him in there, and right, you know, and on, um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh man, he's a dirty old man. Like, but that's what I mean. These, I feel like in this episode is when you start to see that maybe the reason why they're stepping in is you know because later on down you start to see once they find, once they find, um, I, I feel like they notice that they they're they're following money too as well. Yes. And that's where they want them to not be falling. They just want the drugs and they want the dealers. Yes. They can always re-put dealers on the road, they, on the street. They can always put drugs back on the street. But at the end of the day, when you got to dig in for the money, where are you going to find it, right? Yep. In whose pocket? Um, and I feel like that's why they wanted to close this part of the it down. But you, yeah. I only figured that out a few episodes later. Later on, that's right. Well, Because one... Once they they pull off uh, pull uh, what's his name Ashy Larry into it what's his name? <laughs> buddy from the Chappelle show Ashy Larry well, that was, that's who he played on the Chappelle yeah, show right you're Chappelle. killing me I didn't even think of that that's him buddy from the Chappelle show is uh, the comedian who was on the uh, Burt Kreischer show remember it, him and Bobby Lee were on the episode? yeah yeah that's I didn't him. even think it was him I that's totally him. sorry I, I can't remember the comedian's name everybody I'm sorry I'm gonna have to look him up hold on I I, yeah, I want look to him because I'm, I'm afraid to open another window in this fucking thing it's I got been it, working I got so it. good <laughs> right hold on <laughs> but I mean Donnell Rawlings Donnell Rawlings is a dirty political guy he's like the driver for a politician or something and, and this and he gets pulled over with money later in the season we'll get to that yeah. though but yeah that's who I was referring to he basically yeah, yeah. connects a whole bunch of people right and anyways um let's see with this one here too when the crackheads are fucking all ripping off the lumber trucks and and and, and yes. uh and uh all the all the all, all the Brandon. shit from the thing bumps yeah. and yeah dude they were doing some heavy duty stuff in this one that was that was kind of neat man when you thought about it like, i remember doing that stuff with like pop trucks and stuff back in the day but you know yeah. and and uh, them, delivery and donut drivers yeah. like it they would deliver to the coffee shops right yeah. Yeah, well, that's oh. what it says here. It says crackheads. Uh, I wrote here, uh, crackheads. Crackheads ripping off lumber truck. Bub's back in action with friend Brandon. That's what I wrote down <laughs> yeah. in my notes here. 
Another big a big thing that happens in this episode, though, is Avon Barksdale visits the pits. Like, this is a big deal. He visits the pits. He goes and congratulates and puts money in their hand because of the fact that they got Omar's boy and that they pointed him out to Avon. So he owed them like 10000 or something. Like, I forgot how much. Like 5000 each, I think he gave him. And then he gave to Wallace. Uh, or sorry, gave to uh, D'Angelo and gave to Wallace essentially for calling it in, getting getting that uh, done. And uh, this is, you know, when Wallace starts to get a little squirrely because he realizes like how big of a thing that he basically did after seeing the body that morning. And yeah, he's like, fucking seeing the eye hanging out and fucking yeah, yeah he he, he, was, he couldn't stomach it. They all come down to the pits, right? So that's a big deal that he came down and gave him money and put money in his hand, right? So that was a good look for him in terms of that, right? But then. Um, kind of changes the direction of his character. Michael B. Jordan, I says, feels guilty for the death. Yeah, Wallace, it kind of changes it. Yeah, from here on out, he's not the same after this no. it basically happens to him, right? I'd like to see what happens in the next few seasons, but yeah, I, yeah, considering what happened here, yeah, yeah. And what goes on during that scene is the fucking cop who was on top of the building that was supposed to be taking pictures goes to take a piss when Avon visits the pits and misses the whole thing. He's off fucking taking a piss, having a drink on the on the top of the roof. And then right when Avon gets back in the car and drives off, the buddy like dangles his like he's like dangling his dick. And he's like, what? Avon had a uh, sorry, they had horseshoes up their ass, yes. bro. That that day. Yes. And then they go back into the car and they drive off, right? It was just like, ah, oh, I, I was watching that scene and I forgot that happened. I was like, get out of here, man. Because that was like the scene that they were with that was what they were waiting for, was to get a like a, yeah, like a photo of them, right? Yeah. yeah, a recent one. So yeah, that was crazy, man. But they think didn't... about it too, eh? At the end of the day, when they do something like that, you know, um, how many times that must have happened when they were Absolutely. doing of you course. Know, of you, know, you take you blink you go around to take a piss and all of a sudden that's when everything happens and you don't see it you know yeah you know and it's just stupid luck but it is right uh i got uh this is also I when bring omar yeah exactly i was that was my last note on this yeah. one was that this is when uh mcnulty brings omar to see his uh boyfriend they are dead and uh, this is this is when he says that he's always oh, my night with the kids. Like <laughs> we, like, he meets up with him in the car essentially, so he can tell him because uh, they're the ones that informed him that the fact that he got killed. And this is when they start kind of talking to him, and uh, you know, eventually that leads into the next episode where he starts working with them essentially, right? Because he wants to get back at them. They're using that to their advantage, right? But yeah, they they take McNulty flips out on the on the boss, right? Yeah, because of the murders, because the murder they had the murder on the wiretap. That's right. Right, they're but, always uh, one step behind. They lot, yeah, they weren't in time. This is also where again, he, there's a little bit of clues going on at this point, but we haven't confirmed it at this point. Is that there's a rat in their office? Yeah. There's somebody reporting so, to them. Somebody saying something, and they don't know who it is yet. Because they're always one step behind it seems like and they're always making it too late to the scene of the crime and they're always like they can't get a one up on the city you know what i mean like they something gets pulled out of their like uh, up from underneath them and and they can't figure it out right i mean later on you find out that there was an actual rat in the office which we can talk about who it is when it comes to that point but yeah mm -hmm. it's very interesting like what's happening right now with the with the there's a good right? quote in there too with uh, at the end of that one with omar when it says omar don't scare it. Yeah. Right. That was at the end when he walked out. Right. Because he was in the jail. He was in the house. Like he didn't care that he was with the cops there. You know no. that they knew he was with the cops if they knew. You know what I mean? He just didn't give a fuck at that point. His heart was broken, man. He was ready. But that's what's funny though, because when you go in there, if you pay attention, when he actually goes into their operation, they bring him right into the belly of the like. They really should have rethought that whole thing out. But I guess in terms of like. You know, they didn't sound like they had space to do it, and it's not like they really had time to think this whole shit out. Mm -hmm. But they bring him right into, and he starts surveying what's on the boards. I don't know if you saw, like, yeah, that he's checking there. everybody out, looking around, and he's getting a lay of the land. And it seems like the wheels are already starting to turn about how can I get back at these guys? So, like, even though he's kind of a rat, like, it's more for his advantage, like, it's more. Well, like it's yeah, because he's, he's going to be cops. out there after. He's using the cops. The cops are yeah. using him 
he's using the cops. You know what I mean? Like it's like a like a they're they're kind of both helping each other out in that sense. Like he's, yeah, he's scratch my cops. back, I'll scratch yours. Yes, exactly. But I think this is still like from what I'm getting at this point is for Omar's or Omar's benefit at the end when everybody gets fucking taken down. If that's what, what happens, that's what he wanted. That's what he, he wanted. Wants, right? Yeah, he wants it for himself. But you know, you don't know that right away. You think that right now, but then. He disappears for a while. It's right, yeah. Right, and it throws me off, and I'm going, no, man, he's not gone already. What the fuck? You finally introduced him to me. Yeah. Thank you. After six episodes, almost in. Right. Right. So is that is that everything you had on episode six? So that's all I had on that. Yeah, because I wonder the Omar don't scare was right at the end of the right. episode, right? So that fucking that took me for a little run of the land, right? And, so uh, okay, so we're going right into episode seven now. This episode's called One Arrest. Uh, Gold Coast got- slave ship bound for cotton fields, sold in the metal down <laughs> in New Orleans. Right, that's the line from you know who sings that. That's on that fucking documentary I was dying to watch right now, <laughs> but I had to watch this. The Rolling Stones documentary. Oh, really? Yeah, it's oh, from that's Brown right. Sugar, right? The song Pres Belusky says that. Yeah. When talking. That's right. Yes, 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 yes. That, that quote I had to I wrote out that down because uh, when he says it, I'm going, "That's the fucking Rolling Stones line," and then he says it. This is where he talks at the start of the episode where they talks about um, this is how they, they figure out how to flip it's called the arrest. Pager. So run arrest. They, they can flip the pager from the messages, though. This is where he's explaining it and uh, deciphering what they're saying on the wiretap. Like they all speak street lingo at this point, or not all of them, some of them. One of them's turning them. He's like, How the fuck do you know what this guy's saying? And they're like, They're sitting there, like, Yeah, this is what he said. This is what he said. And like Carver or Herc, one of them can't understand what the hell they're saying, right? They, it's funny that the words that they use for them, though. They're like, oh, yeah, the, the little hood yos and stuff like that, right? They should, whenever they talk about the kids, like, they, yeah. They, uh, yeah. yeah, so they're like, how do you understand these, these hood yos these, or whatever, how, what they say, right? Like, it's, <laughs> it's funny the names they use. I've never heard, I've never heard that I've since. Never heard or before that. Yeah, I was like, that's a weird one, like a ghetto kind of name. Them, I guess so. But uh, this is when they too they bring this is when what's it called the major starts getting a little upset because his case counts going up. Rawls, yeah, yeah, this his is case Rawls, counts yeah, going yeah, up, and then yeah. they, they're not they're not solving anything. But his case count, he's lost some good workers to this fucking thing. They should be on other murder cases, right? So this is when he starts delivering all these. You do this, you do this, get right. these done, right? You know what I really like though? I like this other guy too that works in homicide, Sergeant uh, Jay Landsman, the big fat guy. That guy's pretty awesome too. That big fat guy that works in the homicide, the guy who gives them that that guy the card for the uh, fortune teller or whatever, the psychic. Remember that guy, that big fat guy? He's a big. Um, he's a big. He, he's a big fat guy. Like he's one of the he's one of the higher ups in the homicide department. Big white guy. Big white fat guy. Got suspect, like you know what I mean. Like he works in the homicide. Yeah, but he's always like. I'm just trying to think who it is. It's not the. Uh, it's not Delaney Rawls. Williams it's not is the actor's name, Delaney Williams, Sergeant J. Landsman. He works in homicide with Bonk, and and he were he reports the Rawls. Yeah. He's the guy that tells him McNulty's a good cop. Remember, like he really goes to the bat for him, and he's like, he's I'm like, trying to see who it was. Would you say his name was? His name is uh, Delaney Williams. Is the actor's name Sergeant J. Landsman. I'm just looking for it. Sorry, dude. Go on. Yeah. He's on here. Go on. I'm just he's, trying to see. He's really, he's really good. I like that. Oh, guy. yeah, yeah, yeah. The sergeant. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's really good. I like that guy a lot, actually, in this, too. I like him. He's always, like, a joker. And, like, but but when it comes down to it, like, he, like, he's the only guy that really goes the bat for McNulty against Rawls because he works in homicide with him. Like, he says that. He's like, man, this fucking he McNulty is all about himself. This guy, lo- he thinks he's the smartest prick in the room. He's like, you know what? <laughs> He is. He's like this guy. He took down seven homicides last year that were cold case. He's like seven. So I remember, like he yeah. actually he tells them, and Rawls always questions whether or not he's doing the right thing because he hates him so, with such a passion. But he keeps reminding him every time he does that. He's like he's a good cop, man. Like he, I know he's a pain in the ass. I know that he always gets in up in everyone's shit. He doesn't follow the rules. Breaks but the rules, yeah. Results. Like that's what he was trying to tell him. He's like this guy. You know how many cases he had last year? <laughs> like he's like, you know, this dude worked for this guy and everything. Else. Like he's just like this like amazing cop who's like a prick. You know what I mean? Like that's that's what's that's what I like McNulty. Like McNulty is one of my favorite characters because of how flawed he is in this show. And you know me, I like these fucking asshole characters. So like, well, for me, I, I think he's, he's also trying to too smart for his own good. Can't get out of his own way. 
You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I like I like those type of characters. Like, well, he's you know, also he's also you know really dedicated to his job type of thing. Absolutely, like, he really he really wants to clean up the city. He really wants to do good because he's got young kids. He can see it himself, and he's trying to win them back this whole time too, as well, right? Yeah. And this whole horse thing or whatever that he's going through, but but when the major starts getting upset, he's trying to get everybody else to fuck up the the special unit that they got going on like yes. he's trying to fuck up all the rest of the cops on the special unit which is fucking kind of like you know because his case count is going up he's a little pissed off yeah right but that's not the way to do it i mean like he i get what he's doing i i just i think he uh, ultimately he never really wants this fucking thing from here I, i'm getting that he doesn't want from this episode i'm getting that he doesn't really want them to succeed mm-hmm Right, and what they're doing, he thinks they're just chasing it for no reason, or who cares about what's going on in the ghetto kind of thing, you know? Let's still solve some murders. And because of all the wiretap business that's been going on lately, this is when they really start, um, but like, um, giving it like the uh, Omar, like, uh, Stringer tells D'Angelo basically to take people off, like, uh, the like the, the drug, like, they basically get shut down essentially for a little bit. And what they're trying to monitor is who comes, who comes for him to, to him for money and who doesn't because the people that aren't coming to bother him for money essentially, because if they're taking off the count and they're not bugging him about it, it means that they must have had like money from somewhere else. So they're trying to figure out who's stealing drugs and who's maybe snitching because they're, they're now starting to see in their organization that there's snitches or there's ways that the cops are figuring out about what's going on. So this is when they start, um, they kind of really start getting into that. And, um, and uh, this is also the episode where they arrest bird. Omar has been giving them all this information on this guy. Who's a shooter that was involved in that shit with his, uh, with his boyfriend, uh, this guy bird. And then you find out that he really just had it out for this guy. Like he, he they did match a gun to him and everything else. Like he told them about some murders that he did so they can get him. Right. And they ended up taking him down eventually. And um, this is basically, uh, this is the episode where they, they do that. And, uh, and there's this, that whole awesome uh, bit there at the end when they bring him into the station and he talks shit to Kima. He's calling her like a, les- like he, he's calling her a cunt and all this crazy shit. Right. He's like, he's saying lesbian cop or whatever. Remember he's like saying all this, like, worse words than that probably i'm just like you said yeah. and then and then they get off the phone and they're like yeah they basically work everything out and they're like yeah he's not gonna like uh, you know they're, they're done with them essentially and then the te- uh, the uh, what's his name uh daniels comes in and he rips up the picture of that they took before when they took him in for questioning <laughs> and they just beat the shit out of him in the, in the room right yeah after yeah door. yeah <laughs> He doesn't look the same anymore, okay? And then they take a picture afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I love that scene, man. They just fucking put the pounding to him. They're just like, oh, yeah, you want to talk all that shit? They're just letting him talk his shit. Once they're done with him and they identified that the prince come back, they're like, yeah, he's done. They're like, oh, okay, yeah, all right. We can, we can, we can rip this up now. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> I think Daniels has a good, a good quote in that one, too, where he says, I love Daniels. Motherfucker yeah. thinks... He can pit me over a chocolate bar. Oh, that's right. Well, that well, that's that that's the guy that that got hit in the eye, the kid that says yeah. that about Kevin Daniels. Johnson. Yeah, because he gives yeah. him his card. I think that's who he, it was. Because he feels bad. He feels mm-hmm. bad that that Presbolewski fucking hit his eye out, right? And he's a kid, right? So he tries to. He did say that he tries to bring yeah. the chocolate bar as a bribe, and he's like, "If you ever want to do some good or whatever, here's my card or some shit <laughs> yeah. like that." Yeah, motherfucker thinks he can pit me over a chocolate bar. Because he's asking for all the food, right? Like, he's asking for something to eat here, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, they didn't have no chocolate bars. It's uh, all out of whatever. But uh, this is yeah, when he I'm also, the judge, and the, with the judge and the, the district attorney and Jimmy, eh? the judge trying to make Jimmy look stupid in front of fucking McNulty, stupid in front of uh, uh, in front of the district attorney or whatever, and then yes. she walks out of the room because he's being all polite. You know, this is when you first see that fucking pigness of those dirty old fucking lawyers, man. Uh, sorry, yeah. judges, those big fucking head judges. And he says, "Man, I like to throw a fucker to her." And all these pull-ups, <laughs> yeah, fat yeah. fuck. <laughs> well, that was awesome, man. I was like, "Give me a high five for that one." Fuck man. into her, I know that. That's a line mean? and a half, bro. It is. Like, when have you ever heard that? That's well, great. Well, look at Bunks, what he said, too. He said in that one, too, lack of pussy would change even a good man's demeanor. Well, Bunks a man whore himself, right? He's a, man, he's a pimp with that. I told you, man. He's a man yeah. that cigar, just the way he talks. Well, if you think they're bad in this season, watch as time goes on. <laughs> yeah, I can um, imagine, bro. Yeah. 
Um, a big part of this episode too is Bub's friend Brandon. He goes to AA and he goes with him to the meeting. And he lies and stands up to get a chip for one day clean, Bubs. This is when he first gets it into his head. Hey, maybe this is something I should revisit. You know what I mean? Like, cause he, cause he sees the struggles that Brendan's going through, and he, that's his only friend, really. And he's kind of yeah. like, you know, he's like, yeah, maybe there's something to this. And like, this is something that he's tried before. He talks about like later on, and it's really tragic this season because like he goes through a lot of this kind of shit over the next, uh, the, his trick, his character arc is probably one of the best ones in the, in the show, as you can tell, because he is a struggling drug addict. It's like something like, a, you know, like Jesse went through even on like breaking bad and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of shit that he ends up having to be involved with. And, and, and he's always the guy that's subject to all the worst shit that happens around him as a result. Yeah of where he is at in his life right so he he's kind of like the um like he he shows us a lot of horrible shit throughout the series through that character as a result right so it's um he's a good character so i yeah that was really interesting too and uh and one of my favorite um one of my favorite uh, uh, quotes is in this too, when he's talking to Bunk, um, when they bring him in, Bird in, and he's talking to Bunk Omar, and they find out that he used to go to the same school. He remembers him playing lacrosse and all this other shit, right? Yeah. And Bunk's like, yeah, I was the man back then, all this shit, right? He's like, and then he says, um, he's talking to him about something, and about him, if, did he kill any other people? It's things like this. And he's like, no, he's like, a man must have a code. Omar don't mess with no one that isn't in the game. And, and, I want you to remember that line, okay? I mean, okay, this is. I like the way you did this. This is a, a very, very important quote in this. There's a few of gems throughout this series, but that one, that one is a very fucking great quote, that one in this show. That's one of the best ones. He always talking about the game. Everyone's talking about the game in this show. It's really interesting. Like, I like how they always reference it. But that one, the man must have a code. Omar doesn't mess with no one that isn't in the game, man. Like, that, that is a very fucking great one for a scene, that scene. Honestly, like, it's it speaks a lot to his character as well, Omar. That's what I mean. This is why he's such a great character. And, and like he says, he's I don't mess with anybody that isn't involved in this shit, right? So like that's it's really great. I I, I thought I just that's one of my favorite moments of Omar's right there. When he yeah, that. yeah. I didn't pick that. I mean, I heard the line, but I didn't pick it up like that. Like you know, in that sense, maybe because maybe I was too busy to the the one where like fucking the quote where uh, you know Rawls, uh, sorry, where Bunks is Keep talking. Watching. About that's all I'm gonna say. Where, but where Bunks is talking to McNulty and then says that oh, when it came to or when it came time to fuck me, you know. <laughs> you were gentle very gentle right they yeah, played yeah. it off so good the quote back and forth yeah right damn right he says right yeah yeah <laughs> but that's all i had for episode seven you know no yeah that that, that long quote man that yeah. fucking it, that it was like a paragraph quote man yeah and it was like you know see because you could have you could have he was what does he say he could have bent he could have uh he hauled me out of the garage. He hauled me out of the garage and just bent me over the hood of the radio car, right? But he goes, "But you were very nice. But you were yeah. very gentle." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then Bugs goes, "Yeah, and it was your first time. I wanted to make it a shit special." Yeah, they got a long history. Of those yeah, two. He goes, right? It was, man. It fucking was. <laughs> that was killer, bro. But I mean, like, yeah, those two crack me up. They are the funny. They the do. Funny. They can play off each other very well. Absolutely. Absolutely um so is that everything you have for episode seven though yeah yeah and i figured ross i had something about ross is gonna screw mcnulty <laughs> so he goes to bang his booty call right yeah. When Ra yeah so i think that was mcnulty that went out to go get it. it's been a, a little while back that, that that's episode was it episode seven that's where i was almost lost in this and it started pulling me back in slowly yeah right because i was i was throwing you messages throughout the week remember right like little things from the fucking show yeah yeah and right. so then we get to episode eight lessons lessons so what lessons learned in this one this is the uh the cold open of this episode is where mcnulty loses his kids as they're tailing stringer in uh in a like a basically like a market of some sort like uh it was cool like what do they call it front front and rear or whatever like they, yeah just to yeah. follow them around to yeah, kind of so guide them he ends up they end up getting the actual license plate number off of Stringer's car though successfully, but then McNulty ends up losing them as he has well. no idea where they are. Yeah. 
and they had to do one of those old things where you go on the intercom and they got to call the kids up to the, the the father up to the front to collect his kids, which I've been a part of when I was younger as well. Right? So, <laughs> those are never great. No, I was on a leash when I was a kid, man. <laughs> I'm not joking. You were one of those leash kids? Oh, my God. With the, with the fucking thing on the wrist? That explains a lot. Yeah, man. My, my, I, I, I used to take off, bro. And then my next note here, as I mentioned, Donnell Rawlings earlier, I wrote down pulls over Ashy Larry with drug money. <laughs> and this is where you really get into the corrupt, uh, dirty politicians aspect of it. And uh, the deputy brings in um, uh, Daniels and threatens his career essentially for the road that he ends up going down here eventually uh, as a result of all this, because he has ties with, uh, as you find out later on the new mayor or something, the mayor or something. And then basically like um, all kinds of shit as the episodes go on from here, start coming out of the woodworks and Daniels met the driver at like, uh, cause his wife's in the po in politics and he met her at a, at a party, I guess like yeah. a, the episode before. And he was kind of like all like, you know, like super like, Hey, what up brother? Like all this kind of shit with them at the party. And they like gave each other like one of these. And then he's like, Oh yeah. I, I, you know, I'm the, they call me so-and-so and I am the driver for uh, whomever. And he's talking like about like, you know, like shit, like inside shit, like about like, you know, how he's dirty essentially. And he's like, yeah, I'm the, uh, you know, I work for the police. And the guy's like, Oh, <laughs> never mind. Yeah. You know, but then he remembers who he is when they gets pulled over. And um, as a result, they basically, uh, they start uncovering all this other shit and he knows they're dirty. But Daniels is also apparently dirty from back in the day, too. So there's like this whole, like, I can expose you, blah, blah, blah. And Daniels, like, you would have already by this point, like, eventually. Like, he's like, you guys would have already, you don't want all this dirtiness on you. You're not going to expose anybody, right? You're just full of shit, right? So yeah. It's really great when that, all that stuff happens eventually. So that's the with the deputy getting mad because of the state senator's driver, right? Was yeah, arrested with right. a 20 grand. Senator, he, yeah, not state mayor. State senator. Right? But yeah, he, yeah, he, I, not him. There's a mayor later on too, but the senator, he's the guy that goes, she, the Leslie was telling you about that. It's her favorite character. That's the guy that has that line, right? Eventually, like, he's like, she, like, it's like, a, it's his like catchphrase, essentially. That guy, it's really good. <laughs> well, they, they, they pull him over. What money, right? And he's acting like he doesn't know. The money's right there. They see him put it into the and fucking they give truck. It back. He makes him give the money back to him. It's like in a fucking sack. He's like, yeah, here you go. And he's like, well, I can leave. No, didn't they not? Didn't they keep the money? And if he wanted the money, he 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 had to come down and explain no, it to them. That was we yeah. did. They pulled him over and they stole. Oh his yeah, yeah, yeah. When, after he's after yeah, sorry, that's after he was shot. Uh, this is also where um the judge extends the wiretaps in this episode. Like they're about to, to keep get shut down. Yeah. And 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 that that's when like Nalty's calling him out. Was like, who's your bitch? What, what, what does he what does he say that? Like, he doesn't say like, who's your bitch? Who's your dad? Remember, he says like something like that where he's like, <laughs> I usually had put quotes. Yeah, there was a good quote between McNulty and him, right? Because they always are calling each other out, right? McNulty always will call people out, like even that FBI friend of his. He's like, I thought you were real police, brother. Like, he's like, fuck you. <laughs> No, I don't have that that quote there. Yeah, no, I don't have that. Usually, I was writing down quotes as I was going through, but some okay. of them were quick to pick up, and I was like, "Fuck!" You could probably go into to season eight now on a thing on Wikipedia. Sorry, on uh, IMBD and check it out. But uh, I'll, who's I'll, your daddy now? That's what he says. Who's your daddy now? Yeah, yeah, because he fucking owes him one now. Yes, Judge. Fable. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, who's your daddy now? Because remember, he's like, because that's something that they keep saying back and forth to each other. And he kind of, he pulled up the rug from under him at one point. And he fucked McNulty over for his superiors because he had to like report something to the paper or something like that. And and as a result, he got in a lot of shit. So then like when that happened, he's like, oh, you're going to, you want me to call in a favor? And he fucking got on the phone. He gets Rawls on the phone and gives him shit. And he's just like, listen, the city asked for their 60 days and we're going to get our 60 days or whatever. He's like, and if you got a problem with that, like, just let me know. He's like, I'll come. Yeah. He's like, I, you know, and then it was one of those things. And he, and the meanwhile, he's on the other end, like fucking McNulty. Like, <laughs> fucking McNulty. Well, I mean, McNulty's good with the with the judge too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's good with them all. So like you could tell they like that he finishes cases and stuff. So they give him a little extra. That's right. Right. And the other cops hate it because it's like almost like favoritism for him. 
Yeah. You know, but he's good at what he does. This is also the episode where, like we said, first before before that we get to the Omar part, but, but this one here is that girl. This is when D'Angelo uh, sees that girl naked on the bed, dead at the he party. Day, eBay ends up killing her. Yeah. She yeah. Eats too much coke, and then yeah, they- and she gets fucked up, and they store her. You know, she's just sitting there, laying there naked on the. But you could see in D'Angelo's eyes. Yes. That it bothered him. Yeah. It really did. It genuinely like he has he that look. He didn't treat her like a, like a human life. You know what I mean? No, like, he just treated like, like a piece of shit. He, he looks over after the party because he leaves the party. By yeah. the time he gets back, he's like, what's going on? The party's over? He's like, yeah, I don't know. I got out of control and all this shit. They're sitting on the, t- on the couch watching TV. He turns to the room and sees the body, and then he looks. At, yeah. He looks over at him. He's like, "What the fuck? Like, what's wrong with it?" He's like, "She's dead in there." Like, he just yeah. he goes like that. He's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." Like one of she these. Is, she had too much or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he, yeah whatever. Or, I think he even kind of said a gesture of if you want to have your fun with her too or something. But I mean, they. I think they fucked her even after she was dead too, bro. And that yeah. was the like that left it up like open to interpretation. Right. And then, and but that's what he, but then that's when he said she's dead, man. And like he kind of like looks at him. And he's just like he goes like this, like he's just like, fuck. Yeah, like well, he's he disgusted. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah that's really you can genuinely up. see that he's disgusted about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and he's with that other girl that's from that bar too, right? That's so right. I that's mean, friend. Yeah. 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 So I mean, it goes crazy. But then then you got your favorite scene coming up, man. Hey, this is this is the one that fucking made me keep watching for a bit, and then disappeared but that's when oh, Omar you comes out king, you best not miss yeah so yeah. Th- 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 this Holy fantastic fuck. scene so he so uh uh after uh Omar was working with the cops he ends up um this is when he calls him right on the phone and he pages him right yeah so he ends up going to prop uh this is where he gets um uh Yvonne's uh is this when he gets his number no, well, no, that's later on. That's later yeah. on. No, you're right. Yeah, but this is where he says, um, "This is where, I, where where Omar comes out and shoots the, the Yvonne's two boys." It. Yeah, yeah, Weebe gets shot here. This one dead and one in the lake. He goes to shoot at Avon, right? Is this that part or? He goes to shoot at, at the Avon's boys. So one of them is dead. I don't know who it was. I, I can't remember. One of them Dink- died. Dinkum got killed. Yeah, and one of them Dink-um got shot got in the lake. And Weebe got shot. Yeah, that's yeah, right. In the, the lake, and he well, hustled right. back to his car. Yes. But I think Omar got shot too as well in yeah. the shoulder. No, that's later. That's when he goes at Avon and 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 then Weebe comes and like shoots back at him. Oh yeah, him. they come back. Yeah, they yeah. come back at each other. No, yeah, he yeah. Get shot. That's this is what he says though, because they, they try to get the drop on Omar at this point. That's what happens. We yeah. and them find out where he's at. They go to get the drop on him, and that's what he says. You come at the king, you best not miss. Yeah, that's but, what he ends up shooting them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because he comes out of the crack there, man. Like you don't That's see right. anything. He's out of the whistling. Shadows, yeah, he just all of a sudden, <laughs> oh, one shot right to the fucking yeah, thing. Done. This is one of my favorite scenes. You're not wrong. And, the, yeah. and then the farmer in the dell, bro. He starts yeah. singing. He starts whistling it, bro. And I'm tripping out. I'm going. And we be stuck behind the car, shot. And he's like looking around, and he's where just the fuck's the whistling? Because right, it's yeah, echoing. Because yeah. they're in the he's projects. God, he's gone in the wind. He's yeah. Just, <laughs> like, right? he, he yells at you, you come at the king you, you best not miss yeah <laughs> but like i was saying to you and i was wondering I remember we were saying before we started talking here and then i had this written down too but you remember at, when when we when the other guy what's his name uh is laying on the floor dead yeah that he shot that omar shot the first guy that he shot there uh what's his fucking name i can never remember the, i'm having this was on my first watch so i'm having a hard time Getting yeah. all their names right. Okay. But when he's so he's lying there dead on the floor, remember we see while well, he's whistling the song, you see the rat go up, and I, and that's what caught my attention to what song it was, right? Mm-hmm. In that sense, because I knew the whistle, I remember the tune like from yeah. being a kid, but yeah. I didn't realize what it was until I had seen that rat because that you know that she stands alone thing. I think yeah. that was the quote too in the beginning of this. I told you that earlier. That's what he says. He's that's what he says. Yeah, yeah. No, I know, but I think that was the actual name. Uh, sorry, one one of the quotes. You know, in the beginning of the episode, yeah, it, it shows a quote of yeah. somebody saying something from the episode. Yeah, yeah. I, well, think I think that's she I think stands this alone. Episode, it was if you come at the king, you best not miss. Though. Oh I yeah, the next one maybe was one. she yeah, stands yeah, alone. Yeah, 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 that's. 
but that but that was that was crazy it just the, the way they had that whole scene play out that was nuts man well at this point they're on the, they're looking for him because they because of the fact that they killed his boy or boyfriend already and now like they're on they're actively looking for him he's already put money out on the streets to say if you kill omar like you're gonna get like this much money so like he's, he's he has a hit out on him right now at this point right so now omar's finally for the first time I wouldn't say he has the advantage anymore over Avon because he has people actively looking for him, but he's aware of this fact. So he gets the drop on them instead. He claps back, right? So yeah, yeah. this is a really good scene. And another really fucking uh, great scene in this, it, which is a callback. It comes, it happens again later on in the season uh, is that this is the first time where D'Angelo uh, talks about, I think he talks about it to the stripper um, about how he can't breathe. Like, you know what I mean? He's like, this is too much what's going on, like, lately. Like, sometimes I feel like I just can't breathe. Like, he, like he, this is, and that, again, like, that's so powerful, like, later on when he has that scene where he's just like, I just want to go somewhere where I can breathe again. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's just like, it's too much. Like, he can't, like, he's, he's, he's now like, I can't deal with this shit anymore. Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, D'Angelo. Yeah. yeah, that's why he's one of my favorite. Like, I, I, I really understood what he was saying there. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes it just becomes like it's too much, too much. right? Yeah, right. So, like, I got what he was. Like, yeah, I thought that well, was this, really this this season too. I think Omar starts working with the cops, right? This is the episode that Omar starts working with the cops back. If, like, they talk. The last episode, he was really talking, like, working with them. At this point, he's kind of like he's got the bounty on his head, but he had said that the game is out there. That's you know, right. Are you either play or get played, right? Yeah. This right. is also where you see Bunk's drunken whoring. Dude, that was the best, man. I think that was my favorite scene. Bro, he's trying to burn his fucking clothes. They've not see the evidence. Uh. They have pussy. They have pussy <laughs> smell on it. I smell like pussy. Uh, he's like, where's your wife? He's in the big right? room, bro. <laughs> But he's he's asking some for McNulty, as well. his wingman though. He's like, "Come on, McNulty!" Like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're everywhere, wingman. And then she's like, "Get this guy out of here!" So they calls him in the middle of the night. That chick, and she's like, "Get this drunk ass out of here!" And he's like, the "In the tub, goes, wearing the fucking like the he has to bring him back to him on his kid's bed." <laughs> the rope. The pink robe, dude. I was dying. He was yeah. trying to burn his clothes, but he was so hammered because when he goes to McNulty, when he leaves with the chick after, because McNulty leaves, right? He goes, "There's the money I was gonna spend on you, right?" Yeah, right. And he he drops the money there with him, right? And he and he leaves McNulty, but then he goes to McNulty, "Hey, call my wife. Tell her I got a late call." Right? So he yeah. <laughs> he stood up for him. He took. It's he probably so, called his wife. The so guy. smart though, because of course he gets hammered and he thinks about the evidence because he's a cop like that. Right? <laughs> McNulty says that later to him later on. He's like, "Well, what you were saying actually makes a lot of sense, but how?" <laughs> explain to the clothes like you had no clothes to go home in right he's like that's, like, that's what he, that's what he said he's like but then you had no clothes like what the fuck are you gonna do right yeah, like, yeah. he was so fucked up that yeah. night that was hilarious watching him sleeping in the fucking bed tucking him in oh my uh, god uh, but yeah that's episode eight anything else though i i'm good with that one you know what jimmy you're no good for people yes he, he says that to him. That yeah, I know. I know. It's weird. It's After awesome. he just helped him out and everything, too. Yeah. You know, there was a, like a little dialogue before that, right? But that quote stood out to me that you know good for yeah. people. And I'm thinking to myself, dude, he just took care of you, man. Yeah. No, it's true. But I think it speaks to who, like, who um, Ralty is in, in the way, too. Yeah, right? Uh, so, yeah. So, then we get uh, episode Game nine. Day. Game day. Yeah. So, this is, this is the whole East versus West basketball game where they see avon for the first time, first time. Like, actually on the court because he's the coach on the east side right um, but they didn't know right away i don't think eh? until no. like halfway through the game where yeah, the end later on they figure it out but they, they carver and herc uh happen upon this because they're looking for Bodie again because he escaped the juvie or whatever and and they are or not i maybe not they're looking for somebody else and they just they they went there they were observing the the hood and they're like it's so quiet today what's going on and then they found out on the other side of town like in the middle basically they were doing this basketball game that they do every year and this what? This is the first episode where you meet Proposition Joe, which actually becomes a big character in the coming seasons. So he's really cool. He's somebody that works, I think, on the west side that people go to. And the reason he's called Proposition Joe. That's the that, fat guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's what Avon says to him at that one point. He's like, oh, I got a proposition for you because he tries to get a deal out of him, right, uh, in terms of getting Avon's number. And this is the episode where he comes at Avon, uh, Omar. I know I'm jumping ahead, but this is the episode where he ends up getting 
Avon's number, his pager, and he pages him. He comes outside Orlando, uh, Orlando's. Uh, Weebay went to get food, and he shoots at him, and he almost gets him. But Weebay pulls up at the last minute and ends up saving him. And this is when he gets clipped in the arm, Omar. Is, is yeah, and he had to fucking kind of duck and hide. Because he comes at Avon in this. He tells him, he goes to prop Joe and says he wants to parlay. Like he wants to basically squash the beef or whatever that's going on right now because it's too hot for him in the streets. And this is when they come. He comes at Avon and he, and he fucking gets clipped in his uh, his arm, right? But probably well, this where they're uh, looking to put money into a basketball player or something. What's that? Where Avon and, and, and yes, uh, and this is where they looking. hire they hire a kid like to basically that's going to make it into the league to play for them on the east side. And uh, and then Proposition Joe has got a guy. So, oh, how much money for me? How much yeah, money for yeah? Betting. And the West actually ends up beating the East Side in this episode. This is the first time in like forever. And, yeah. yeah, but the funny the funny thing too is there's a lot of little things in that one too. Like okay, because they just the last episode and this episode they're kind of telling it's time to lay low. You know what I mean? Let yes. lay low for a bit. Let it, let uh, Omar think. Uh, you know, it, well they 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 use the very very. Uh, quotable line there right let, let, let him get comfortable and then when he does bang we get him right but yeah they i'll leave that f word for a gay guy yeah 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 or cocksucker yeah. or something like right, that yeah 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 yeah. Well, yeah what are people say what are, yeah what what are people gonna say when they see that still walking around yeah the cocksucker still walking around I mean, we but, can say cocksucker about anybody, but and we haven't really been talking about him all that much this season because honestly, like he plays like a little bit more behind the scenes role in this season, and he becomes a bigger character as the as the seasons go on. Uh, but Idris Elba, a Stringer Bell, you're slowly getting to the. Uh, you're. Yeah, I don't know who he is at that point right away. Like I know he's got money and. No, it's because they they operate differently. Stringer is all about more of the business aspect of it. Avon's more about like the streets and the cred and everything else, right? They operate on two different levels. And that's what you start to learn is that basically I'll just jump ahead a little bit for you. When Avon goes to jail at the end of this season, Stringer takes over, okay? Stringer does things differently than Avon. He's more of a businessman or he's trying to be. He's trying to be a business He's like he's taking classes. He's doing the night school in this. He has like legitimate business at a dry clear. Yeah, he's taking drug money. He's, yeah. he's, he's get, getting so, laundering it. So that's the difference between these two. Is one's a businessman. One's still got one foot in the streets, like that kind of like he's like a more of like a like gangster still, like Avon. He's he cares about his cred. He yeah. cares about what people think about him. We got to do something. We got to respond. What are people going to think of me? And 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 and, and uh, Stringer is just like. No, no, no. Let's like lay low for a bit. Like, don't be stupid. Don't get out in front. You know what I mean? Like, they, they, like let's hold back and all this kind of shit. So they just, there's just two different people, and that's why they kind of work well together. But on their own, that they, they need each other. These well, know? they're starting to figure out too. Like, they're starting to figure out that something's tapped. Something's somebody's yes. got a wire somewhere because they went and broke all the phones, and then they now these guys, D'Angelo and all those guys, have to walk a lot farther yes. to to go use phones and stuff like that, right? This is also uh, when you see Wallace getting hooked on drugs, man. Yeah, that 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 broke my heart. I was like, dude, what are you doing? I wanted to yeah. smack him in the back of the head. I know he starts using to deal with the pain of the fact that he uh, he's seen a dead body in the dead body. So he's really fucked up over it. He's not account. He's not on the count anymore. He's staying inside his house. He's doing drugs on the low. This is when he's not really being seen out and about in the pits that, that much. And his friends Pooh and whatever his name is, uh, Bodie. Um, they're like, you know, what's going on with that guy? And eventually they catch, they, they, they find, they see him buying and picking up drugs from yeah, someone. His boy, his boy sees him. Yeah. The young guy, what's his name? Who or whatever his name Pooh, is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. But they also, the, is it, was it Omar that was throwing the, 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 the crack out there for free? Yes. He was throwing on the heroin. On the like a regular Robin Hood. <laughs> Yeah, right? Just throw it in and watch all the crackheads fight for the fucking money well, for the no, heroin? No, 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 no. So, sorry. He was giving them... Uh, when he stole drugs from them, he was giving them out for free. But in this episode, it was Bodie that threw them all out there because it was a new uh, new, new sample. That yeah. they were giving Yellow them. tops, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, Poot. That's his name. Poot. Poot. I'm calling him Poot. Well, you're, clo- you're close. Yeah. You forgot the T. Yeah, I knew it wasn't Poot, but I just like calling him Poot. It uh, sounded fucking cool, yeah. yeah. Um... What about uh, you follow the drugs, you get the drugs and the drug dealers, but you follow the money, you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, 
Yeah. This is when they, this is when they starting to get worried, man. And yes. I think some of the political parts of it are starting to kick in now. Because that's where money starts to show up where like, oh my God, where did you get this donation from? And where did you get this donation from? Things, right? Like just like in any other kind of wiretap show. Exactly. Yeah, that's, show. that's what I uh that's what I wrote down here. They figure out money make uh, they're making a uh well, they figure out basically that these guys are making a million dollars a month and then they they basically tie it back to they must be going into political contributions. They're like, where's all this fucking money go? Right. So like, mm. and, then, and then they, and then, you know, later on they find out when they see the paper, like you said, about the fact that they're tearing everything down and everything else like that. They, they figure out where all the money is kind of going eventually. Right. So this one too, there was another good one where, where Bob's actually fucking fishes the drugs out of the fucking thing, bro. That was in- intuitive, bro. Right. But yeah, Bubs gets on top of a. Um, but he feels bad, yeah, afterwards because the other guys took the beating from him. Not only that, he almost gets killed and he he he, he avoids that beating. Yeah. But then they find out that it's baking soda that they stole and they shoot it. Yeah. And then they find out they're like, "I'm not yeah, getting high, Bubs. Double you." And 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 he realizes in that moment, I almost killed. My, I got myself killed for fucking this. Like Those you know guys what I mean? Took a beating is, for it. This is when the wheels start turning in his head again. He's like, I should get clean. Like, this is too much. Like, I'm getting too old for this type of shit. You know what I mean? Well, like, that's when he's been going to the meetings with his buddy. And that yeah. other guy said, you know, what when, when, you know, you can, what do you say? You're always that, young like, enough. It, my cousin or whatever is getting into it now, but he hasn't hit rock bottom. You got to like be 35 or 40 to hit rock bottom. That's what he said. He's like, yeah. he's still got time. He's like, how about you? How old are you? And then he's just like, yeah, you know, I've been, I've been out here for a while. Like he kind of doesn't want to t- talk about it. How old right? he is, yeah. yeah. But you can see that he's getting nervous about it. Yes, absolutely. Right? Because yeah. it's a, you know, you don't last long after a while, bro. But even that, I, I don't know why I wrote this down, but they were, I guess they were, must have been listening to, I always feel like it was this episode when you had said about the phone sex, it was this one. Cause I remember, remember that fucking phone sex in the nineties, bro. I remember doing that, <laughs> you know, of course yeah. it had all kinds of that shit back then. That's why it was hilarious when I heard it. And I, and I, that's why I had the question mark. <laughs> well, uh, this is also the great, uh, scene in this episode is when, uh, Daniels comes down on Herc and Carver because they got they pull over and get all that money and they lose it in the wheel well and they think that he stole it. Remember? Yeah, they, have yeah. To they start it. blaming each other. Yeah. Well, no, Carver doesn't believe her. Kirk's no, like, yeah. I didn't steal it. And he's like, We wouldn't let me in on that. And he's like, I would tell you if I was stealing it, right? And then yeah. basically they find out it's in the wheel well. And then Carver's just like, he's like, Fuck, you think he's gonna believe us? He's like, You didn't believe me, right? <laughs> he's like, You didn't believe I stole it, so probably not, right? Because yeah. Daniels already has been involved with so much of that type of shit. So he's just like, Don't fucking he's like this money better make it back here like today, or else you're gonna like I'm reporting you, right? So yeah, yeah. yeah. That was that was, that was too funny, man, with that. Yeah. Uh mm, yeah. Anything else? No, it was Whalen was the guy who was trying to get his nephew clean. That was the white guy that was in the thing. Yeah, that's what we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, that's right. right. The AA meeting. Yeah. 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 Oh, um, another big scene too was Avon made Daniels following him in this episode. Remember they followed his car after the basketball game and he did one of these? That's a great meme that I use sometimes where he's like, Yeah, but what the fuck? What he's yeah? Why? And he's just like, No, like he likes he can't him. get me. Huh? Yeah, he's like you can't get me because they know they can't pinpoint anything to him right now. Right, as he's driving off though, he sees them. At this point, they already got the drop on them. They're aware that they're being followed and everything else, right? So they they keep aware of that, right? So I I liked that. Um, But the stripper approaches. uh, All I know is the black guy cheering for the West Side. That's all they said. They didn't know what he looked like at that point either. This is uh, (laughs) the stripper gets approached in this episode too about the dead stripper from the party. Yeah, the, the one D'Angelo is dating in this, episode, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, so yeah, even uh, McNulty has a good quote stupid criminals make stupid cops. Yeah, <laughs> that's right, right? That was actually a good a good quote for this one, too. But, but uh, but yeah, that's episode nine, and then oh, shit, they're following episode 10, the cost. This is a big episode, the cost. This one is, yeah, um, uh, this is. This is the episode where Kima gets shot. Uh, she goes undercover with Orlando. But isn't uh, isn't just before this one where you said would we said just before this episode here too when Omar takes the money it takes uh, a shot at Ava. I said that already. No, yeah, still shit. But he, no, 
uh, he goes to the East Side Coast, East East Side Coast, so we go that other coach there. What's his name? Proposition Joe. Yeah, he so, goes to see prop. I mentioned that to find out the pay. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we talked about all that. Okay, sorry, but so, it's just so I had it on my last part here. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, so I know because we had jumped ahead. That's why. But basically, uh, in this episode, the big thing that happened is Kima gets shot. He goes undercover with Orlando, and uh, because basically Orlando gets pinched because he starts trying to sell drugs. Um, and and Malta goes to look for Wallace, mm-hmm. trying to find out who he is. Yeah, the cops so, pick up Wallace in this episode yeah. and try to get in the flip on them because he, he is was the one that called it in. They figure that out, and he's, he's the one that witnessed the murder. And so they figure all that out of in this episode. But, yeah, Lando gets pinched by undercover cops trying to buy drugs to distribute. Um, and then he's from, like, another precinct, and he ends up connecting with the, the fact that they're working this case with Avon Barksdale because he snitches out Avon Barksdale to the cops, and he says that he works for him. And then Kima basically goes undercover as like one of his hoes or something, yeah. and she ends up getting shot because Boy, they're, they're in the that was car. crazy. Yeah, that's really fucked up. She tapes a gun underneath the car seat, but the tape fucking fails; like it falls off or something. So she can't retrieve the gun in time when the car gets ambushed, and they get attacked by uh, what's his name, like little boy, big boy, or I forgot the guy's name, but basically one of the other guys in Lee Bay attack the car, um, and she ends up getting shot, and Orlando gets killed. Kima gets shot and puts it gets put in critical condition, which is the you know, we'll talk about that in the next episode. Um, Bubs gets left high and dry with no place to go because he reaches out to Kima as her informant and says, I need a couple hundred dollars to kind of get me into a place where I can stay clean and all this kind of thing. And he doesn't realize she ends up getting shot and he gets kind of left out in the cold, right? So yeah, some big things happen in this, this episode. This is where Omar and Stinger in this episode too, they they meet up. Omar and Omar is with the wire. Parlay, that's right. Yeah, to try to try to parlay and end the beef and get money from Avon. He asked for money for him yeah. to get down. And that's Omar right. leaves for New York. That's right. He, he ends up going to New York in this episode. Yep. So he he kicks a few bucks from McNulty for the he gets on the bus. He says the reason he ended up leaving was the fact that they actually pretended and took into consideration that they were going to give him money. He, he asked for money. If they told him to go fuck himself, he, then he would have knew where they were at. But he said that they said, oh, yeah, come meet us. We're going to give you this money. He's like, Omar's not stupid. Like He's, just, like, he's like, I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm fucking leaving town, right? He's, he's like, to refer to himself in the third person, eh? Yeah, he does. He does. You right? know, and speaking of cocksuckers, when he comes in, he walks into the room. Eh? <laughs> That's the best, bro, because they were talking <laughs> shit about him, right? right Before he meets yeah. fucking Stinger. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Know? That's oh, right. God, Proposition bro. Joe, he's, he's talking to Stringer and he says something about cocksuckers. He's like, Oh, speaking yeah, of speaking of, yeah. <laughs> yes, he's walking in the room. Yeah. Um uh, he, he, favorite, you know what the best is he makes jokes on himself, man. Yeah. That's just the best. My favorite, my favorite quote in this episode, though. This is one of my favorite quotes in again oh. in all the episode, is when Orlando gets caught and the lawyer comes to the to his defense. And the lawyer looks to him and he's like, uh, and, you know, at this point, Orlando's already spotted. This is why he ends up getting shot because the guy in prison sees Orlando talking to the cops, right? The mm-hmm. guy in prison calls them and tells them that he's snitching, essentially. And, uh, you know, he was their fault. He was the guy that was supposed to be the squeaky clean guy, right? Anyways, now he's so the lawyer comes and he gets in all this shit and he basically says, This is how many years you're going to get. And he's like, You know, this is how it's going to work and everything else. And Orlando's like pissed off. He's like, What the fuck, man? Like, he's just sitting there and the, the lawyer's like, Hey, you wanted to be the, in the game. Well, now you're in the game. Like, he's just like, He's like, Yeah, that this is your fault, man. We told you. Don't fucking sell drugs. Don't try to do any of this shit. He, he, like, he warned him. Avon's like, don't fucking do any of this shit, man. Like, right? Because he was going behind his back. He was trying behind his back. Yeah, that goes to make some more money. Distributing the drugs. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So, like, that's. They didn't need him after that. Once he got in trouble, they don't need him. Now you don't have a clean name. The lawyer's just like, hey, you wanted to be in the game. Now you're man, in the game. Man. That lawyer's cool, man, too. Eh? That lawyer's straight up top notch. He's a cocksucker, too. Yeah, that's he's a real yeah. fucking, yeah. That uh, what do you call a defense attorney? Eh? Yeah, one of those ones you fucking hate, but you love if you need him to defend you. He's Saul in this series, essentially. Yeah, like a WAP version of him, but yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, not the <laughs> Jew. I don't feel like the Jewish version, like no, Saul. Not, there. He's not, uh, you know, he's not. Uh, but no, wait. What are we in now? This the uh, episode eleven now. Yeah, that's it. Hunt? Okay, so this I don't really have many notes for this, but I will I'm say like, this is probably the best episode of the whole season. Is this episode right? Like I okay. think so. 
It starts off with the shooting. The it car ends shooting. With the shooting the last episode. This is yeah. It starts off so it with starts off. You're right. There's the like no scene. laps. Yeah. Like and and this is the reason this episode's so good is the cops, one of their own gets shot. They're all over this all of them. now. All but of then, them, then every the district. F- Everybody goes into fucking action after she gets shot, Kima, because you oh, should. Yeah, now all of a sudden, yeah, yeah, that's a yeah, big. All of a sudden, we, we care about your fucking uh, squad or whatever, right? Well, that was what was disgusting. Like the guy who's like, I don't know, I, I, I he's really high up. He comes mm. there and he's shaking the hands and taking the photos. Remember, and Kima's yeah. girl shows up, her, her girlfriend, and and like the the commissioner goes to him and he's just like. uh that uh, he goes to over to him and he's like, "Are you gonna s- introduce yourself and say something to her?" And he's like, "No." Nah. He's like, "I guess I'll do it then." This fucking asshole. He's like, "Yeah, this guy's gonna come through and take all the credit, though, right?" Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so that was the uh, the commissioner. Yes. The old man, right? The old yes. white guy, and he didn't even know that the uh, the lieutenant was was what's his name was the black guy. They thought he was the white guy, right? That's right. Remember, the he's like, cop. oh, great job. <laughs> he's he's like, shaking his hand, and he goes, no, this is a lieutenant or whatever. Was it lieutenant? The fuck yeah. Was his name? Daniels. It was Daniels. Daniels, yeah, yeah. yeah. Lieutenant yeah. Daniels, yeah. So he goes up to, yeah, and he's he, he's like, oh. I, he's like, dude, when I seen that, I was like, you really can't get any more racist than that, old no, man. No, but it was just like Daniels. That's what makes us look so bad. That's what was funny about it, though, because Daniels, like, you know, as someone who's had to deal with that, like, just like, Probably rolls his fucking eyes. He's like, yeah, I figure like, yeah, this Again. That's what I mean. Like, what do you want? Like, he just, like, smirked, and he's just like, yeah, okay. Like, he's like, yeah. This guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, no problem. <laughs> but he yeah. says it's, he says it's, the, he doesn't say it's the girlfriend of the cop. He says it's the uh the House roommate. Roommate, yeah. Well, yeah what then, do you want then, me to say there? The guy, like raises his eyes like, oh, okay, yeah, all right, because they're not used to it. And then yeah. when he goes to speak to him, that guy who fucking made the mistake to go speak to her, he's like, oh no, no, no I'm not doing that. And then he's like, oh, I guess I will then. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's he'll... the best scene in this episode though for me was when Rawls fucking had to take McNulty aside and calm him down because he's all Ooh. fucked up. That what There's a, a few parts in this scene. In this what episode. a great scene, though, man, where he's all he's got bl- her, her blood all over him because he rushed blood. to the scene. And McNulty yeah. feels responsible for her getting shot because he was the guy who had the idea well, of her in, undercover, right? Yeah, I mean, technically, if you really want to take the blame for yourself, yeah, yeah, but. You know what I mean? No, but it does that's come what, down that's to that. I love the Rawls is like, I fucking hate you, McNulty's. Like, and I would be the first person to say if this was yeah. your fault, but yeah. it, it is not. He's like, shit happens. He's like, you There's cannot too. blame yourself. For, yeah, he's like, get it together. <laughs> like, basically, because there's all these just like sitting in there. And then, then there's that great scene where he's drinking at his desk and the yeah, lieutenant. She went bad. Yeah, he's like, get back to get back to work. <laughs> he's, he's like drinking <laughs> at his desk. <laughs> This yeah. is like do your job. Yeah. Oh, but when when uh, when made when the major too when he says to to McNulty when he says yeah she went bad she took two for the company that's, that's all right. that, that was happened awesome there line. that was right awesome that that was that that was good coming from a dick to yeah. you know because he's always been he's been a dick the whole fuck look he, when he first came to the scene anybody who doesn't but anybody who doesn't belong here get the fuck out of here. Right on the on the crime scene and yes. remove your fucking useless asses from yeah. the area, right? Rawls comes to action in this. I actually really oh, yeah, man. Rawls. He, Rawls he took pretty, fucking stands. Rawls, yeah, Rawls was a pretty solid dude in this episode. Absolutely, yeah. Because when it comes to their own, like, yeah, they they take that serious, right? Yeah. They even know. told even told the DEA guy to go fuck himself because now the DEA guy wants <laughs> in on it. Fuck, fuck you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Before you didn't want to help us. Now well, everybody wants now to help. Use press though thing like in the news right so yeah. that, of course everybody wants to be a part of this now to take him down yeah that was awesome when he did that and then that and then bubs gets brought in and he gets the shit beat out of him by that fucking huge guy remember that poor guy because because he because he knows oh, bad, bro, he calls her kima's phone right because he's in her format and the, guy doesn't know. the homicide guy doesn't know so he brings him in and he's like who the fuck were you calling today? He's like, he's like, man, get Mc... It's funny because he calls McNulty McNutty. He's like, get, Mc... get McNutty in here or something. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you. And the guy's like, feeding. <laughs> bro, it was bad, bro. I fucking felt bad for him, man. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I felt bad for him, too. Yeah, he's trying to stay clean, and he's, like, on the edge, you know? He's like, he can't but The keep problem clean. is that, that he get, McNulty gives him that 20 bucks after. Hey, you see how he crumpled it and just he held it on again. to it? He's trying not to, but then and when he sent him down to the fucking on, ghetto again. 
when he sees her later on, Hima comes out of the hospital. I know this is jumping ahead. Well, we, we're going to talk about it anyways. But when he sees her and he comes yeah, out of the hospital, yeah. he's like McNutty, he's like, don't tell her, man. Like, because he's back doing drugs. He gives her, he gives him the $200 that Hima had for him for the house. Yeah. And then he goes straight to the dealers, right? Mm-hmm. And he's just like, he turns around and McNulty like shakes his head. He's like, yeah, don't worry. Like, he's like, I'm not going to say nothing. But like, it's that sad. But he never, McNulty never knew that he was actually trying to become clean because he had no. threw him the 20. But that's why he didn't he know he was living up, upstate like, or whatever at his yeah, sister's. Yeah, I know. He's just like, yeah, yeah, here, bubs. Here you go. Why don't you do go to get yourself something? Go do your right? job, yeah. I know, I know. I felt bad. I know. And you then know. they pushed him. They pushed him. Well, I think it was Kima getting shot, though, that pushed him to doing drugs. Like, he was fucked up after that happened, right? Like, yeah. he was really disappointed, like, what, what ended up happening. And then he... And then he and then McNulty told him to get back out there and get information. So they forced him to go to the spots he was trying to avoid. Yeah. It is, as in a way, McNulty, it's true. He he that's why he, you remember when you said that he made that line where he's like, look what like bunk, even though he was the one responsible for doing what he did, and he blamed McNulty. It's because McNulty thinks about himself. Like he's very, he is very that's what he, they said to the Rawls was right about that. That he he even admits that at the end of this season, this was never about the case. This was because of me. This is because I, because I wanted to solve the case. That's what yeah. I mean. Very He's really selfish. a cop though, but very selfish though. He is yeah. like very self-absorbed. Yeah. And, and that's what I mean. Like that's, that's why, like that's his fault. Right. What was this one? McDonald's goes in to talk to the lawyers. And has a why a weird talk tone. Uh, wait. So now he's not taking any bullshit from the Servino's lawyer and tells him to turn himself in. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, Servino. Well, Servino wants him to, to, to turn himself in, right? He wants him to, to turn himself in, right? So this is where you see the lawyer's job. They give up Savino with the lawyer's help, but we be, he ends up going to Philly uh, till the heat goes down in this episode. And because of that, um, because the cop was shot, he basically goes and ends up going to Philly. But Savino takes like gets like five years or something something ridiculous stupid, right he's, stupid, yeah, yeah. Yeah. he's like i'll do the five like and then the lawyer's like happy like and basically yeah. like you get nothing out of it like, it's all about the media hype that's what i wrote too it's all about the media hype at the time for the for the baltimore commissioner i feel yeah but this you know, that fucking old white guy but just the way that they jumped to action and that that was non-stop then it basically trying to do shit in this episode like this is like a fully focused episode on the cops and everything they can do in their power to take down the guy who shot them. And then, like you said, in the end, they get fucked. Like, they barely get anything for this fact that the guy shot her, right? So, like, yeah, it's... I think this is when you find out who the rat is, too, in this one, though. No. You don't find that out until the the end. No, because uh, they they know that there's a rat in there and the state general put him in, but they don't know who it is, right? Yeah. But but I think that's... What's that? Turn my alarm off before yeah, I no off. I think, yeah, we're going on almost three hours here, so let's just jump ahead now. But that that was the that that's honestly my favorite episode of for a sec. Go ahead. Keep talking. Go on. Yeah, that was my favorite. I gotta grab my medicine. No <laughs> and then you got episode 12 called Cleaning Up. Um let's see what I got. That one was actually I got a lot quite a bit on that one too, as well. The most notes I have is on this episode. This is where a lot of shit happens. This is where everything basically happens. And then the last episode we wrap everything. Up. Uh, yeah. Okay, so at the start of this, it looks like the captain looks like he might get a promotion off of this case. Like uh Lieutenant uh, Daniels, it looks like he's gonna finally get that promotion at the start of this, okay? Yeah. Then the lawyer gets tipped off of people investigating uh, campaign contributions. This is the district attorney woman. She gets tipped off and brought into a meeting where the, the politicians are trying to get out in front of this shit because they could they, they told her that someone has been looking into their funds and she has no idea about this shit going on. Uh, and they're trying to explain them that they're not guilty of anything. And she and she's like, listen, I don't know about any of this kind of stuff that they're doing in this case. And she's like, oh, yeah, that's fine. But just in case. And like, they tap it. They're like, we're not involved. <laughs> so they're trying to like get out in front of it. And But then she gets a hard on for it when she learns about this case and everything that they're doing. She's like, oh, I can become a AUSA or whatever if they fucking they get me involved in this kind of shit, right? Like, so yeah. like, she's very turned on by the uh, proposition of being involved in this in this case now. Like, uh, And uh, I think this is where her and McNulty end up hooking up again after their little uh, beef. Because uh, 
because she gets so turned on by the fact that they they went in and they're they're you know they're basically uh you know covering all this dirt on the politicians at this point right so she's like really into this case right everyone lo is loving what's going on with the case here right so there's a there's quite a big one on now at this point right you got you got uh you got another tenant not putting up with the shit uh not putting up with the senator's bullshit because of the driver that got caught with the money. Remember, the yes. senator was trying to give him a hard time yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, his his superior brings him in, and uh, and the senator is trying to get out again and, and basically saying like, "Hey, listen, those campaign funds, they you know they're they, you know he he knew what he was picking up, and it's not what you think, it's not what it looks like." And and he's like, "No, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure I know what's going on, so it's cool. I'm just gonna keep doing my job, right?" He's yeah. just like. <laughs> And then he basically even tells his superiors, like, well, you know, if we have nothing else to discuss here, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to excuse myself. <laughs> yeah, he tells them straight up. Yeah. <laughs> and his this senator is... tells him off. Like, he is fucking <clears throat> pissed. Like, he's like, you don't know what you're fucking start, like, you're starting up here, bud. Like, you don't know who I am. Like, obviously. And he doesn't care. He doesn't sure. care. Sure he this guy. No, yeah. but he doesn't care. The lieutenant doesn't care, man. No, he's 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 enough. pissed off with it, man. Not enough. Yeah. And I mean, this yeah. is also too when when D'Angelo and them and all that with no pay phones, no no pagers, no nothing. He's giving them the cell phones, right? That's right. He comes in with only the cell phones and they to call and they can only call Stringer, right? The thing is, what's his name about this? So uh this had to lay low. Avon and Stringer ask for Wallace from D'Angelo in this episode. And Wallace is back too. Yeah, so he went up to the country. They forgot about him. They put him up there temporarily with his uh, grandmother or something because they were waiting for him to speak in the trial. And and this is where fucking Daniels fucks up because Kima got shot. Everyone forgot what the fuck was going on because they lost their heads there for a moment with the case. Yeah. And then he ends up coming back from the country because he's kind of sick of it up there and he kind of wants to come back and he's had a little time to think now. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to come back and I think I'm going to try out and be the counter again and all this other shit, right? And he comes back and Wallace is just like trying to be like, no, don't you want to go back to school? Remember we were talking about all that? He's trying to give him the way out, man. And Avon and and and, and they approach uh, uh, Avon and Stringer approach D'Angelo and uh, he's like, just let the boy be. He's like, it doesn't matter. He's like, he's not a problem. And he's like, even if he was in the game, he's out the game. He's like, what do you mean out the game? Stringer is like, he's like, nah. He's he's you he don't have to worry about him. He's like, he told him to shoot him. Yeah. And that the best scene is when he's about to walk away and he's like, Avon, just leave that boy alone, man. Like he's just like, just leave that boy. Like and then like he like good kid. And he just leaves. He's just like he's like he he's he thinks that he'll he's family. He thinks he'll listen to him, right? And and yeah, I mean that's we haven't seen yet. I haven't seen what happens with him, right? He's still in that. He's still he didn't think it happened to him, right? No, he's still there. Don't I tell know, me. I don't bad, care. Though. Like don't a, tell a, me. Yeah. Because I don't want to know what happens. I might end up having to watch season two now, <laughs> you asshole. Okay. Now you're making me go over all this stuff, and I'm remembering how intense it's getting at the end. Like this yeah. is when Hulk passes the fucking sergeant's test. And he's gonna make fucking thing. Also, he's gonna rub it in what's his name's face, his partner's face, man. That's right. Right? Because he uh, passed the test. I couldn't believe it, man. This is also where they correct the stripper's eyesight, so she can wear a wire and get information on, from Orlando's club. And uh, her. And well, they did. This is the one where they killed they Wallace. Friendly. This is the one where they call tell Wallace. Yeah. yeah, this is the one. It's there, man. Fuck it. I have it start in a big star of two because I said, "What the fuck, man." Sad. This is where Stringer comes to the pits and he pulls over Bodie and Bodie wanting to be a, a big man and be in charge at the pits and try to. That's advance. the one right there, right with the Saturday night, like, the Saturday That's night, right. uh, late night chat thing. Yes. <laughs> so order. Bodie takes it upon himself with Poot's help afterwards. After he does the first initial shooting, they yeah. corner Wallace in one of his uh, their stash houses and they fucking shoot him. And it's fucking horrible. It's just sad, man. That was a big death. When I first watched his show, that really fucked with me because I felt like he didn't deserve Bro, it. I, I wrote what the fuck right beside yeah. it. Like did a WTF and big words, man. I'm yeah. going, what the fuck? Because yeah. just the way you see him bringing up and watching the little guys, you know, like fuck. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he, he did everything he could. And, you know, McNulty, it bothered him, eh? And, 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 and what a scene um, with, with uh, D'Angelo when he gets. Oh, yeah, the, man. When he got know? arrested. Yeah. Springer comes to see him with the lawyer yeah. and they told them what happened to Wallace sure, and he doesn't believe them because they don't show him a picture at this point. He doesn't believe because he, he doesn't know what yeah. happened. He's in jail. Yeah. He got picked up. Right. So he, yeah. 
he doesn't know what's going on. And McNulty says that or whatever as they're leaving. You're like, oh, yeah, your, your buddy Wallace there. It's a shame what happened to him. He's like, get the fuck out of here. I know where Wallace is. He's there's nothing wrong with him. And then, and then, like, and then, like, he comes to visit him. He's like, hey, what's going on with Wallace? And, like, Stringer doesn't say anything. And he's just like, where's Wallace? And he starts, yeah, like, yelling. Oh, yeah, yeah. And like, and he's just like, and he just freaks out. Like as soon as he finds that out, he just like he loses it. He's like, I don't need this fucking lawyer. He's like, get out of here. Like he just he doesn't want to see him. He doesn't want to deal with the lawyer. He's like, I'm gonna get my own representation. He's like, fuck you guys. Like he's like, he's done. He's done when he finds out they killed Wallace. So they didn't listen to him, right? Like I yeah. felt so bad. Like he he's done when that happens. You know, he's like, I, I you know I'm out. Like. He's so fed up. It was a sad moment, man. Even now, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. I can yeah. see it in your face, bro. You know, it's, it, it is, bro. Yeah. I, I, that's why I stopped talking about it because I was like, because I, I, I know the stuff he was doing in the in the, in the beginning of this like, throughout the season there, and I'm going the fuck. And then that's is actually when you first get introduced to to Snowfall, mother. There, yes. Right. This this episode, and this is where I tripped it. up because he has to. <laughs> his Sorry. mom brings him food. He's like, oh, is that one of your new girls? Yeah, your girls? It's, it's my mom. <laughs> that's what I was trying to. I was like, well, okay, because right away it didn't, it didn't, it, it didn't really put a a, 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 a meaning to what, what her part was. I know, like, it didn't say. It. He said it was her mother's mom, but yeah. why is she coming down? And he's at the ghetto, and she's driving a nice car or whatever, and driving somewhere. Like, I'm wondering. I'm trying to put it all together, and then I start realizing within the next. Yeah. couple of within this episode and the next episode where her part lays in it right with everybody she's part of the family right yeah so i didn't realize that. and then now it, it made me make sense then i went that's when i looked it up and i said this is the snowfall chick yeah right and i well, said that's the thing that's why when avon speaks to her uh because that's his sister he basically says like you better get that boy in line because he's gonna like after that whole scene happened he said how he he let him down because he was trying to run drugs over to New York or Philly or wherever the fuck he was going, and and he got caught, right? You know, on purpose, yeah. I feel like they did. They should send them with somebody. And he got fucked over, right? So then he's like, "I let him down. I'll make it up to him." And he gets his. He tells his sister that she's got to figure it out with him, though, so he doesn't snitch because he's like, um, it will ruin everything for everybody. Because Avon's like, I support this whole family, right? So without that, like, you know, if he. If I go to jail, like you, you know, you're not gonna be able to get paid. Like you were, you know, all of us are gonna be affected, right? So, and she says that she's like, "Oh no, my son wouldn't do that. Like he knows where, you know what I mean? Like he knows better than that." But that he, she raised him so well that he actually does have a, you know what I mean? He, he actually conscious. cares about how they're fucking him around. And he, he tells her that straight up. He's like, "They don't care about me." He's always talking about family. The first chance, like, how many times am I gonna take a fall for these guys? And how many times yeah. he's gonna fuck up and not care about me? And like, they said they're gonna have to do the time, yeah. And the Wallace thing, though, that fucked with. Like, he told him straight up, "Don't do it." Like, leave the boy alone. Like, what's wrong with you? And then, like, but he wasn't wrong. He was gonna snitch. Like, he was gonna snitch. That he yeah. had to get killed. That's what I mean. It's you, they weren't wrong, but what I know it sucks because it was a kid. Yeah. It's fucked up. But like, and, you, and you, they, had, they had a little bit of a storyline to him already. You know what I mean? Like in yeah. that sense. They yeah. had already a good story, solid storyline with him about being such a nice a good yeah. kid. But he probably went on to do better things too, anyways, right? D'Angelo is my favorite character from the first season. Like I remember this brought me back to when I watched this show the first time. He was my favorite because because he actually had a heart. Like, and because he was like, fuck these guys. Like, you know what I mean? He got fucked over way too many times in this season. Like, and then well, you find out that he didn't even kill that chick that he went to jail for. It was Weebe. And he and they told him to go there with drugs. For his his Avon's girlfriend, they tricked him. Yeah, they, they did it on purpose. Time. Yeah, they yeah. tricked him that time. Because Avon's a little bitch, bro. I'm starting to realize that. I don't like him. I don't like him. He's just, you know, he's a cocky motherfucker. Yeah. You know, and he's just lucky that he's gotten away with it for this long. And yeah. I, I, you know, and this is only the first season, like you said, fuck. But yeah. I don't know how how long he's gonna be. I know they get, they, you know, there's a lot of stuff that happens, right? The tenant is told to end the case too, man, and get it over with, right? Yeah. So, so, but, but the, the other big thing that happens in this uh, episode is they the arrest money. him. They arrest him. I mean, he packs up everything in Orlando. They get rid of everything. There's some money in a safe that they. they well, they put they put those wires in there, the cameras, eh? Yeah. The thing, and then he's trying to they watching him trying to get the money out, and then That's the cops right. come in. But that was the part that you're gonna say. I know you're gonna say this part about the money when the, about when they arrest him and the money from the safe. What? And the two cops, Hulk and the uh, Hulk, Hulk, what's his name? Her. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Carver, yeah. yeah. And they actually decide to keep a bit of the money for themselves this yeah. time. They both turn to each other, and there's like, 
Yeah, that was good. I did like that. That was the one under the bed. No, wasn't it the one from under the bed? Oh, the mattress. Yeah, yeah, that's under the mattress. Because that one was just drug money, anyways. Like nobody knew about it. Nobody seen it put that too. They had um, the vests on or whatever, and they put it under. Just tuck it. Here, take a couple for us, and then we'll give them the rest. That's all they want to see is money for the media, for the TV. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, man, I almost uh, fucking teared up right there talking about it, man. That was sad. That was that. That still affects me. They rest Avon and not string, eh? Well, that's the, that's the, that's, that's the, that's the whole point. That's the great part though, at the end where, where, um, they come to arrest him and he turns around to get cuffed and he's like, and then, uh, and then, uh, they, that's the thing. McNulty and him cross paths a few times in this season. And it's always like, I'm so close, right? Like in the courtroom when he's like, nice job or whatever. Nice work. He looks right? back at him, yeah. He goes, yeah, you happy? Yeah. Like kind of thing. You happy? Well, the SWAT all come in and, and uh, him and McNulty and Daniel's like, fuck this. Let's just do this ourselves. And they all, they both walk in by themselves. Right. And they just, they walk in and like, they like creak the door open and it's just both of them just sitting there. Right. <laughs> he's like, all right. It's so anticlimactic. That's what's so funny about it. They're just like, they like, yeah, here I am. They're just like, yeah. <laughs> just what like, are you supposed to do? Right, I know, but it's just so funny because it's such in their minds. They're probably like, "Oh, we're gonna make this huge bust," and, and meanwhile, they could just see them sitting there waiting to get arrested, right? So it's just like it took all the air out of it for them. I feel like, right? Like it's just like Man, oh, it shows it's- the projects empty, eh? and then that's at the end of that episode. That's there right. it shows There's it no empty. No one on the couch. Yeah, yeah, Nothing, right. Yeah, and then and then McNulty says, "Catch you later," to trigger. Yeah, like, what the fuck? <laughs> that's how I said it. Yeah. I like the way the next scene, the next episode, the last episode started off. I'm done with this, so we can jump ahead. So yeah, last episode. So, um, but a lot, lot of big fucking moments in this one. Yeah, and sorry, in 12, in twelve. So episode thirteen, sentencing. Yeah, go ahead. What's her name? Uh, uh, I can't remember. No, no, the the cop that woke up. Kima. She wakes up yeah. in the beginning. Yeah, Kima. I wrote OMG right beside it because I didn't think or she was going to wake up. Kima or Greg's? Yeah, she came out out of the coma. Yeah. yeah. And they yeah. wanted to, to to lie about seeing both the shooters, man. Von she still tries, won't fucking do it. Von tries to put her in the right direction. He's like, Listen. pointing the fucking finger right at it, the thumb. <laughs> you know, I like that though because she says, like, listen, sometimes you just got to get there on her own or the something. Hard way. Like that. Yeah, that's right. And then he tells McNulty that later on, and he's like, sometimes she's a real. You just got to play hard. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes like, you just got to play hard. I think. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I like that scene too because he could have put them She's both honest. away. Yeah, because Weebay, she couldn't, she couldn't put it on Weebay because she's like, I, I only saw this she other guy. See him. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But they, they, uh, when they had that crime scene, they didn't f- only until they got him. everybody little out man. of there. Little man was the guy's name. Little man. Yeah. Yeah, and then until they, you know, with that whole crime scene, until the major got there, they didn't realize where they came, the shooters came from, and anything because everybody was just crowded and nobody knew what the fuck was going on. They didn't right. know that they. They had ditched the car, and then this is when they found out a bunch of stuff, right? Yeah, right. And uh, and then this episode, this is by in this episode, um, the new lawyer that um, that um, uh, that uh, D'Angelo uh, hires gets in touch with the cops. And uh, again, this is like again one of my like you know because I like all these D'Angelo scenes, and this is when he says that line where he's like, um, he's like, I was freer. When he talks about when he was in jail, he's like, I was freer in jail. Than I was at home. He's like, I can't breathe any longer. Like he's just like, I just can't. Like that's when they're talking to him. They're questioning him, right? Because they show him all the pictures and they show him the picture of Wallace, and like he keeps going back to it. Like they show him other pictures. And he's like, yeah, you know, that's fucked up and this and that. But he keeps going back to that picture and like, and that's when he says when he picks up like the Wallace picture and he's like, he's like, that's it. Like <laughs> he's like, I gotta sell. It. Like I, he, he's like, he's right at everybody else. He said, if you find me somewhere new to go where I can finally breathe, I'll, I'll give you everyone. That's what he says. Like, he's yeah. just like, yeah, I'll give you everybody. He's like, I just. Bro, that was the chills. Yeah. He's like, but is he going to be in the next season? That's what I want to know. Don't tell me. But, uh, you know, like. He goes to know? prison at the end of the season. You know. Yes. That? Yeah. I, I, I seen that. He does go to prison. But. Well, what's. There's, there's more to it, obviously. <laughs> he's in also. He's in season two because it shows on the cast. Right. He's top cast. He's listed. <laughs> right? So I don't know, man, where the fuck he is. But I don't know. There? I don't want to tell you. You're going to have to watch. <laughs> oh, Stinger but, and yeah. the Sis. Yeah, they try to get the funeral home and talk about, uh, talk outside about Avon not handling the money right I now. I like that a lot, though, when he said that, though, man. Like, I I the way that. he said that. 
Yeah, there he's freer in jail than he was out on the outside. Because think about it, but bro, he's he's a pawn, right yeah. there. He show right there in the middle of that picture. There, there shows that these are the pawns, man. Right That's here. what I mean. There's so much foretell, like so much foreshadowing in this show, like of comments and quotes and all that. That's what I mean, man. They they the way that they come, it comes back around in this show. The more you watch, the more you see that they put all this. They it's not clear at first a lot of this shit, right? But the more you see the show progress. That's what ends up happening to a lot of but these. They people. had Wallace's uh, shooting on tape. Yeah, and that's when D'Angelo fucking. That's it, man. He just starts talking, bro. And that's where I stopped writing because after that I was just paying attention. I was like, "You cocksucker, Nico! I'm fucking now. I'm hooked, you bitch." And I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> "I'm gonna start calling you Omar." Yeah. <laughs> Keep you like how that came around. They yeah, didn't yeah, see that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, quick, I'm kind of quick sometimes. Yeah, my, sometimes. Well, no, it's because my internet was fucking with me all day, and my neck's been fucking sore. So I've been doing this. You see, I've been doing this all show. Yeah, I have been seeing that. Oh, uh, so you've yeah. been making me laugh, bro. Uh, this, so this, basically, in this one, Lieutenant Daniels finds out that Carver was the snitch for the cops, and he ends up becoming a a city cop, a city police at the end of this episode uh so he you see him getting sworn in essentially but he was the snitch on which this one is carver again the white guy herc's black buddy the one that oh, yeah the it was him it was him carver. Yeah, 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 yeah. carver was the snitch the whole time but Daniel it's funny because he stole money so what happens now is he gonna rat fucking her this thing wants to be a no, sergeant daniel, daniel speaks to him and he lets him go on his way but he just told him he's like you're gonna make a lot of decisions that are gonna affect a lot of people's lives in your career he's like so just know that like <clears throat> when you move forward like he says something along the lines of something like that to him like sometimes yeah he, he just basically carver says that no daniel says that to carver when he oh, okay, okay. That he's this he's like i found out you're the snitch pretty much and he's just like listen He's like, I know why you did it. You wanted to get this into this, uh, you know, on the police or whatever for the for the city or whatever like that. And he's like, I get it, but he's just he wanted to let him know that your decisions affect a lot of people, like what you do. Like it, it was something like along those lines, basically. Well, like, being a rat too could have cost a lot of this. Shootings could have costed. Uh, could have played a lot. Remember, you're hiding money for the reason. He, I I feel the reason that he was a rat was because he's trying to. Keep an eye on where they're I going with the money trail, anything, man. I, I know, but There's I'm no I'm just saying. Am I am I feel like I'm going in the right direction when I think like that as a criminal? I'm thinking or a cop criminal slash right. way of thinking when I say that they 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 put a rat in there, a high a high right. person in the in the police department or the the you know lieutenant major yeah. sergeant whatever the fuck you want to call, put somebody in there, yeah, to figure out what these guys are doing because they were following money, yeah. And when you follow money, yeah, you start seeing politics time. and everything yeah. start. And I can see where that starts playing into other seasons, yeah. If that's the case, but I haven't had a chance like you to watch the seasons yet. Now, fuck you, because now tonight yeah, it's twelve after, fucking forty five, and I'm still gonna watch. Yeah, after a three hour conversation, the next episode. There you, there you go. Because there's nothing else on right now, so it's just perfect Good. time I to kill. You. I got you. Fuck you. <laughs> I love you, but you know what, bro? Sometimes, like, okay, it, you know, we don't, we try not to steer each other in the wrong ways. No. Right? Okay. I mean, you, you, you've never start, steered me in the wrong way, whether it come to music, whether it come to movies. I try right? not. To. Yeah. And I try to do the same. I try to find shit that you'd like. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, I know it was a hard sell that, you know, that, that show, that television show I made you watch the other day, that was a hard sell in the beginning. But once you started to watch it, I've watched, you were just, I watched, you watched it all before me. I watched even all his older show now. The Nathan <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? So, like, to be honest with you, um, it's funny because just the way me and you are, and, and, and anybody that knows us out there, we're right. kind of different in a way, but it plays well with each other when it comes sure. to picking different things out because like you kind of we've been doing this for years now. time when it comes to certain stuff that's what i mean like we were like listen you like this like you know like there's been a few shows like that the um the other one with the soccer players that you told me about that one's sick uh yellow jackets i'm waiting for that to come back that you know who's and, in that one the new one elijah I wood heard, i heard i watched some of the rob's episode with you last week i saw it yeah fuck man like why 
I don't know. Sorry. So there's that. There's that, and even the other one that you told you put me on to the one with the the they're they're all inside. They go to work, and it's like a different form of themselves or whatever. Uh, oh, sir, a, a, a severance. Excellent show. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. I mean, I had seen the ads for that one, but you're the one who were like, you need to watch this show. Like, you know, but I I know intriguing stuff like that for you when it's intriguing oh, like I that. It. I you love, love it. it. I love and it. And I know. And I, I'm the same yeah. way. And I think we have, in yeah. that sense, we have that you same sort of most interest. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I might not have the comics like you and all that kind of stuff, yeah. but when it comes to other things, so, yeah, music, no, absolutely. absolutely. We mesh pretty good together absolutely. that way. So there you go, guys. After a three hour conversation, it seems like I'm James wide awake now to watch more. You might see another episode down later. the line, and at least that time it will it will rebrand this as this is an episode talking about the wire. I know we kind of came in on a three hour episode of late night chat with this shit. If you were in this guys, conversation, right. it doesn't matter because you're not hearing me say this right now, so it's all good. <laughs> you're already tuned out three hours ago. <laughs> But this is a good conversation, though. I'm glad we had it. I'm glad you you at least ended interested in this show. But I do want to say one more thing about it. At the end, Avon, D'Angelo, Weebe, uh, little little man, and a bunch of others end up going to jail at the end of this episode. They get a huge bust, and everybody gets reassigned to different spots in their career at the end of this, which leads into season two, where it's a total fucking seat change moving forward. And everybody's in a different position, it seems like, at the start of season two. And we steer away from the drug de- game and we focus on the ports. That's basically but season two, man. All of a sudden, at the end of this episode, what happens? Our boy Omar, Omar shows, shows up. Shows up. And he's I haven't place. seen him in four fucking episodes. That's right. And all of a sudden, his little rat ass shows up out of nowhere. And what does he say? What's this fucking quote there? I can't. This episode. I, it's all in the game. It's all in the game. That's the first <laughs> quote in the but line. He pulls up to somebody. I think it's in the Bronx. It says the the the. the it says it on the wall uh, outside. I didn't pay like, attention to that. I just seen him. South yeah. Bronx. Okay. In the background, there's a sign that says South Bronx. Okay. okay. Standing uh, like on a building of some sort. And because uh, now he's relocated relocated to New York. We know this, right? Meanwhile, yes. Avon's whole organization at this point has been taken down. He's all the way in New York. He's safe, right? He yeah. rolls up on somebody, asks for some drugs. The guy's like, oh, yeah, he, he goes to pull it out or whatever. Oh, Avon's got a – sorry, Omar's got a gun in his face. <laughs> he just starts laughing at him. And he's just like, guys, what the fuck? Hey, it's all in the game, yo. It's all in the game, right? Like, he's just like, yeah, hand it over. Like, and it just ends on that note of Avon being, like, still out there doing shit like this, right? Like, yeah. I want to put a pose a quick question out to the, the group of people are – like, sorry, if, if anybody that's that's still tuned into this right now, guys – uh, unfortunately, I apologize about the first little bit with the internet connection. That was me. You know, I should learn to reset the router and stuff, but hopefully we can tune that up a little bit so it keeps you guys interested. But at the end of the day, um, I wanted to ask and pose this question to anybody out there. And I don't think, I don't know if he was, I didn't do my research, but um, I know they used to have, they, they nowadays they have uh, big things about uh straight people playing gay roles and vice versa and and you know and i'm not I, i'm just trying to know about about this character himself omar was he a straight man playing a gay character I, I believe, or a gay character and a gay man i believe he was a straight man at this time because this is that the point in time where they didn't care whether or not the person was representing the character because it is acting was actually representative of that thing. Now I know it's much more important in terms of them assigning. Yeah, be politically correct and stuff. Not always. Sometimes it's still happening, but for the most part, yeah, it's something that Hollywood's much more aware of and because they want to give people that have disabilities things like that. Yeah, they want to be like, you should be playing this disability, bro. But not not that. That's not the disability, you know. But but yeah, I know you're saying if if he's a handicapped person to play a handicapped role. Not in his case. Not in his case. I'm saying other people, like even people that have 
yeah, you know, that, I, you can't even say that now. Like you can't even say John Malkovich when he played of mice and men. You you, right. you know you can't pull that off anymore. You can't play Forrest Gump on him. Yeah. You know, it's kind of people would would say things now, but right. this was early yeah, enough. Or whatever. Yeah. So, anyways, people that. Yeah, what you would consider like for certain roles like that, they have to have the same afflictions or whatever if, to play those parts essentially now or or like, you know what I mean? Like, that's what I mean. I don't want to say it in a negative. Con uh, no, sense, not at all. But, but they have to. Yeah, you're right. They are very much more aware of they have to cast people in these roles because they're not get or if it's a trans character, it has to be somebody is who's trans. You know what I mean? Like that. They don't want to give these like with um, uh, the, the Star Trek, show, like Euphoria. 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 Yeah, Star Trek is like that now yeah, where they have, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know. Right. So they so, are trying to, you know, listen, I think to a certain extent that's important and it's cool that they do it. But at the same time, I feel like in certain you, cases, this is still acting. This yes. And you still acting. need to show that you're a good actor. This is, you're supposed to play different. Here's the thing. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at this. Tom Hanks recently said that he wouldn't play the guy in Philadelphia. Philadelphia. I know. Right? I heard that. Which yeah. It's fucking ridiculous. Right. Like that's like he that, played it amazing. He won an award. You won yeah. a fucking award for that. So, movie, I mean, right? he went down the fucking 90 pounds. Remember Didn't that? He? I'm pretty sure he won it. I think, I think he won. I think he won. Yeah. I think so, I, I, I am not going to quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure Philadelphia was an award winning show. It was groundbreaking. Dallas buyers club. Same thing. Dallas Buyers Club, your boy, your fucking boy, won an award for that movie. Yeah, Matthew McConaughey. But what was he playing in that? AIDS in that movie, he had AIDS. Oh yeah, yeah, bro. So I you're telling about me that. that he couldn't fucking play that part because he doesn't actually have AIDS. That's what I mean. So things like that, I'm like, come on, like you know what I mean? Like we can't actually. Well, you're not really any. Di yeah, I know that. That way, you're not really any different in that sense because it's just you're you're playing a sickness. To be honest with you, it's deprived a difference. of a lot of good. Uh, no, but I'm just saying, if we're gonna look at everything through that lens, where do lens. we? where do we draw the line in terms of acting? Yeah. Right. So yeah. that's what I mean. Like, I think we would lose a lot on a lot of good performance good stuff over time as a result of this, but you know, I'm, that's what I, I mean. mean. I'm not totally against it. I just, yeah. I, I just want to throw that out there. I don't want to get, well, I just, and I, and I just wanted to know for my, I don't think he was, I, let me yeah. check though. I don't think he was yeah, though. because yeah. you know what? The thing that helped me with the whole thing is that fucking scar. Yes. That's real. It, He's I know a, it's real. I've seen it on this yeah. fucking thing. And, Every and I'm going, he, does, he has that scar. It's real. And I'm saying to myself, okay, now that's crazy because I'll be honest with you. Um, that actually still made him look like a tough gay guy. Yeah. If that makes any sense to me, to you. I mean, I know you get those guys that are called bears and stuff like that now that are big, burly fucking men, right? But you know, this actually made it made him blend in a lot better in the fucking ghetto, I would think. Right. Because, he, you know, you, you look like, OK, they fucking cut his face. We don't know why they cut his face up. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. He is not really explained in this first season or ever. Uh, but you know what? It's also coming up by the time this airs, guys. And, and when you guys are watching this, it's going to be a year to the death. Just about. Cause he died in September. When we first did that episode on shooting the shit. He was just, he yeah. just died. Yeah, that's right. He had died in September of this of last year. And, and I just pulled up an article right here, and this is what the article said about him. It's because I, I had looked this up. Um, he said uh, it says here, um, M Michael K. Williams left a lasting LGBTQ plus legacy in The Wire, and it says here like this says. His portrayal of Omar and the Wire was a tour de force, and his and his was one of the first unapologetically gay black characters I ever saw depicted on screen. It was amazing, and you know what? Like you could never, I would never have thought. Okay, there guaranteed there was guys like that that are that are hardcore like that that were gay back growing up. I gar, I can, I can put money on it, but you never knew that was yeah. something that was kept at home. He didn't care. Right. He's depicting it as, you know what? You don't give a fuck. Come deal with me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you give a fuck about that. You want to call me a faggot? That's what he's basically right. saying. Come and get me. Right. I'll show yeah. you who's a faggot. Not for anything. I don't mean to say that word discriminatively no, at all. I'm just no, using it as a reference. He says it. Yeah, no, absolutely. No. And, 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 and as I was just looking through this article, like it just says, like, even when he used to go on, like, 
uh, certain platforms and stuff to promote this character later in his career and stuff like that. Certain black platforms, like he won Hot 97, things like this. They're saying here how like he defended like his his role and how he like that's what I mean like because you kind of well, you should defend it. It was a great build for it a lot though. That's what I mean. Like a lot of people like at the time, and I'm telling you as what I said earlier is the case. It was a big deal also because he was a black gay man. Like it was a, it was it it Huge. was a big deal at that time. So growing up in a Baltimore ghetto yeah. is what they're trying to say is that now they're depicting a certain type of person, a certain uh, where they live what they yeah. do now they're targeting like they really push the limit on that character mm -hmm. right especially for the lgbtq community and for him to uh for him to defend and and, and stand by what he said and, and stand by it and, and do a good thing for them you know what all the power to him you know what i mean yeah and i remember saying this to you and guys i, I you know don't don't please don't take me in the wrong way in the wrong context here because I am not this type of person, but you know, I do make jokes here and there. And I said to Nico, what do you got me watching? I said, I got gay, gay gangsters and lesbian cops. Right. So I couldn't put it together at first. Right. But the storyline came together so great by the end. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, it, it blew me away. And now, like I said, I, I like I said to you, fuck you, Nico, because now I got fucking four seasons to watch of this show that has 13 episodes <laughs> in every and they're not 40 minute episodes, no, they're know. 56 they're minutes hour. long. <laughs> they're a full hour almost. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, HBO doesn't fuck around when they do a show, they do a full hour. Oh, I, I'm glad I'm glad for this uh this this uh you know what I mean? Uh this last bit of uh I knew you got excited yesterday when I was telling you that, dude, what did you do? These last three episodes I binge them. I was up till four in the well, morning I yesterday. That. I told you that I was like, oh, I hope I hope I didn't steer you wrong because, like I said, wait till the last couple of episodes. It gets pretty crazy, right? And uh, so, anyways, to, just to circle back though on what we were saying, not that it matters because that was the point that you were trying to make there. Uh, he wasn't actually a gay man, but he did a great job, and he actually was a great representation for them, despite him not being so. Uh, that's what they did said. You win an award for this. I don't think he did, but he was a great actor. And that's why I said a year ago when we talked about him on shooting the shit and that episode got so many fucking views because we called it, we called it, uh, we, it said it was called Omar coming. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. And it was just cause he, I seen that scene. Like he's got the fucking shotgun walking down in, the street. He, he was in boardwalk empire after this as well with their boy there. Yes. Yeah, uh, um, what's his name? I never really watched the whole thing. I watched some of it, but then other Excellent. stuff came out. He was he was one of the main characters on that show too. He was he was great. I like uh, Mr. Pink in that one. What's his now, Mr. What's his name? White yeah, Orange yeah, yeah. from Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His fucking name. Okay, this guy in the top corner there, yes. above you. Yes. What's his name in real life? Uh, I feel like I've seen him in other things. I just can't remember where at right now at the top of my head. Williams. He was in Oz. I told you that. It was Oz, but he was yeah. in other stuff too. Not too much, to be honest with you, that I've seen anyways. Uh, no, I... see here. Well, he's he's continued working to this day. I just, oh yeah, he was in The Night Of too. No, he was in The Night no. Of. So was Omar. Did you remember that show? No. So was Michael K. Williams. Okay, he was on that too. Uh, Law and Order, he was on some episodes. The Good Wife, uh, I don't know, uh, not I much else. I think, order. to be honest with you, I haven't seen he's on an episode of Blue, but yeah, The Wire is the biggest thing. And Oz is the things that he done that he did that I knew him from, honestly. And Oz was pre seat, pre like, yeah, pre Oz this was time, 90, Oz was 97 to 2000. He was super so young, he in Oz. was a kid in the Oz. Absolutely. Oz, yes, he was. He was a kid in Oz. Yeah, he was. He was one of the younger kids on Oz too. But uh -huh. yeah, he was a kid. Because I mean, he looks like a kid here. So he's probably in his twenties here. I would yeah. say. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. He's. Um, yeah. That's that's about it. I mean, those are the only things I've ever seen him in. He's good too. Bodie's great. He's a great character. And I, I mean, I grew up around the corner from areas like this in, in North right. York, right? So I mean, you you see Different these low rise buildings. Yeah. They, they just tore them all down. They're gonna put big buildings up now. 
big towers. Yeah, they're still doing it around Toronto. And there's, it's, it's, it's fucked up. I don't know if they're doing it because it's easier to maintain or easier to get in and out no, of. What they want is they want to integrate them into other better areas. And they think as a result of their environment that it actually prevents them from getting into shit more. But the problem is then the people that do live in those areas are against it because they don't want people they feel like that are going to cause problems. In well, right. Right. Yeah, they tore out the whole ghetto in, in, in Jane and Finch. They tore that's the whole right. thing out. They that's, leveled it. That's the that's the idea behind it, though, is that they want it. Up. That's the idea behind them doing shit like that when they do that, right? Is that they yeah. want to push people out and, like, you know what I mean? Like, so. It's a different area. I know. They threw some people up in Brampton. They threw, you know, they move them out. But then they once they put those high-rises back in, yeah. they're going to start moving them back yeah. in. Yeah. I think it's easier to get in and out of, of the high-rises, to be honest with you, safety-wise control like just so many other coming things, into you know? here into an enclosed area <laughs> yeah is is pretty i mean there's been there's been some crazy stuff that even my brother has probably seen during those times right sure. but you know growing up there so sure well but, well that being dude, said though what a great conversation jay um, you really thank brought you it so together. much man and great, then you great, know what great for talking about like that was like uh, i said branching off and saying all those things here at the end that's really good i'm glad that it it, it kind of you know i made you think about all those things and that the show it, you it sounds like you did enjoy it in the end right i'm glad about oh that. i did yeah. and then it's as it was getting through you see how i got more interested yeah. as we were talking but the problem was is that with without the internet pissing me off and shit like that guys i would have been a lot better in the beginning but, but to be fair you didn't really have much to say those first few episodes no, exactly so i think it worked out fine i mean it, it is what it is but uh you know it, we, we we powered through and these last fucking two hours have been great right it's just the first never, yeah. yeah i feel like you know it, let's get rid of the first few episodes we'll come in halfway through <laughs> we'll just throw in the parts yeah, where it's, i'm not squirreling out I'll have to examine the tape. <laughs> Fuck, I know. I, now I'm putting you on the spot here. I've got a busy week, so. It's all good. This is a good conversation. I, I, I love having a great you. one, bro. And then thank you for finishing the show. So, yeah. So, guys, you may see us again talking about season two and another episode. Not of late night chat of maybe a, its own thing. We'll see what happens. Yeah, you never know. I might I might already have season two done by the time you come on September 4th and, and, you and have your first regularly scheduled it. cast. <laughs> there you go. You might, because I kind of want to watch it too. So you might, you might talk me into it too. Honestly, it's so different. It's so different. I'm telling you right now. I'm. It's so. It's all white guys. The second season, for the most part, like it, it changes, right? Yeah. Um, you still see everybody, but it's like you get like a scene or two an episode. Like let's say it's like 55 minutes. You probably get, you know, 45 minutes of the other story and like 10 minutes maybe of this shit that's from this season. You so it's a it's a lot different the second season. So it's. You'll see, at least from what I remember, maybe I'm wrong, but I remember it being a lot more focused on this whole other new storyline, which is great. Great storyline. McNulty in the fucking boat as a captain. Right. As a ship fucking cop. That'd and, be cool uh, to watch. For anybody who ever watched The Office, um, his the girl she ends up with is in the second season, uh, uh, Michael's uh, girl from the, uh, Holly. Oh, yeah? Holly, who is a Michael, uh, who ends up with Michael in the office there, uh, you know, um, she's in the second season at the port. She's another redhead that they actually used to replace for the love interest of fucking McNulty instead of the district attorney. <laughs> really? Eh? Yes. Yes. It's he must like his redheads. He does. He does. So, yeah, you got to watch fucking it. It's really guy. funny. It's kind of got like a Fargo thing going on. <laughs> sort of. A Fargo thing. Yeah, that's pretty neat if you think about it. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, it's very cool. So there you go, guys. So you might hear us talk about this. Might not be the end of this wire talk, but thank you for tuning in. If you guys actually check this late night chat episode out, if not, as I mentioned, it's always in the feed. Hope this has inspired you guys that have never watched the wire to go check it out because as you can tell, there's a lot of great stuff in this show. Amazing and, uh, stuff. Man. Well worth checking out. Yeah, this is the twentieth. Slow start. Yeah, yeah. Slow start. Be ready, though. Power through it, and I think it'll be worth it, as you can tell, guys. It's it's really good. So, well, you 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 you've changed my mind about it. So, if yeah. that did it for me, hopefully we did it for everybody out there. Yeah, and then next, anybody who hasn't watched it, exactly. And then next week we'll be back to our regular scheduled programming. Everybody, I'm on with Jay once again, and we do our live episodes weekly with the, us and the rest of the co-hosts. Nice. And uh, let's get these subs up, guys. We're really excited about our stats lately. There's some crazy shit going on, guys. Honestly, you got to get these subs up. I actually give them a thank you for whoever tunes in and listens. I actually said it, man, last last episode. Yeah, I heard. I heard. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, you know what, man? I, I, I 
any for you guys to even take your time out of the day to listen to us thank you so much man absolutely you know, yeah we do this for fun but if we enjoy if we make it in good for everybody else and you guys enjoy it yeah we do it you know yeah you know what it, keep us going it's for sure it. it helps yeah, yeah absolutely so all right man all, all right. right brother we, we will uh thank you so much let's hear this song <laughs> what are we gonna listen to now uh let's see here for the outro music <laughs> all right yeah. what do we want here all right try to figure it out there's a lot man i mean i i can't i can't, I can't think well you know what you can play that brown sugar song if you want there's a line <laughs> in the song right oh, i thought go. about just this is just another version of way down in the hole by another uh band that's used in another season of the wire. So here we go. This is the Astro music. Yes, yeah. yeah, later guys. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out. When you walk through the car.